Check one two. One two one two. Welcome everybody. This is a special city council meeting. Uh, we're at the Marina Event Center, 190 East 13th Street, Riviera Beach, Florida, 33404. And it's March 22nd, 2024. Uh, clerk, can you please call the roll? Mayor Ronnie Felder. Chairperson Glenn Spiritus. Here. Chairperson, Chair Pro Tem Kashamba Miller Anderson. Present. Councilperson Chadrick McCoy. Here. Councilperson Shirley Lanier. Here. Councilperson Douglas Lawson. Here. City Manager Jonathan Evans. City Attorney Don Nguyen. Here. Clerk, um, I am here on Zoom. Okay, Mayor Ronnie Felder is present. Assistant City Attorney Keandra Davis. And acting city clerk Deborah Hall McCullough is present. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. You may proceed. Please. Can we please stand for one minute of silence? Thank you, Councilman Kashamba. Please lead us in the Kashamba Miller Anderson. Please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Are there any additions, deletions, or substitutions uh, on the agenda from the uh, council? Any members of the council on any substitutions? Being none, Mr. Manager, any substitutions? None from staff, Mr. Chair. Mayor, any substitutions? Mayor Felder, are you still with us? No, 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 Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. And there's none from the council. Are there any disclosures uh, from the mayor? Any public no, disclosure? Uh, any public disclosures from the city council? Being none, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? Move to adopt, Mr. Chair. Mr. McCoy, is there a second? Can, Mr. I, Chair, can I second? I would ask if you could please indulge me with a second. Okay, I'll second that motion. Councilperson Miller Anderson? No. Councilperson Lanier? No. Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Chair Spiritus? Yes. Okay, the agenda is adopted. Chair Spiritus, we are on item number 12, discussion and deliberation. We have three items under discussion and deliberation, and we do have public comments, comment cards for each item. The first being item 12A, procurement RFP number 
broker of record for employee group insurance plans. The acceptance of public comment cards for this item is now closed. Okay, all the public comments, please. You have three minutes. Mr. Chair. Please be reminded. Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. do you mind if I kick us off, please, by leading off okay. before you do public comments so okay. that everybody understands what the posture is and why I requested this? Thank you, Councilman McCoy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, um, I know this is very unusual that we would have an item like this before us, but I believe if you allow me the opportunity to explain why I requested uh, and called for a special meeting, it will provide more context. Particularly, um, I'm not sure if any of the members prescribe or subscribe to Demand Star, but I do, and I regularly and frequently watch all of the solicitations that comes out of the city, particularly um, those that involve insurance, having some background in insurance, I am very much in tune to um, wanting to know what's going on with that. So when this solicitation went out last year, I believe it may have been in November, I'm sorry, in, excuse me, actually it was in January and it was received back and it was closed somewhere in, February, in January. Well, what happened is I attended the February 20th, 2024 evaluation committee meeting for the group insurance of record. There was a couple things that I must start off by saying that was kind of procedurally um, um, questionable. But, and I don't think anybody was, uh, in my opinion, prejudiced by it. But number one, the first thing that I noticed that there was two separate notices. The first notice said 10 o'clock a.m. And then the second notice said 11 o'clock a.m. And if you look on the city <coughs> website and you look at past events, you'll see it now. So as I'm sitting in the room, um, there was a little bit of a routine delay with this. The meeting started off and I specifically requested a copy of all of the backup documentation, which is should always be made available prior to any meeting because this is um, all of our meetings, as you know, are governed by Florida Statutes 286, which is the Sunshine Law. And particularly, um, I noticed members of the committee had a pretty, dive, I would say, robust conversations about um, the various proposals. We received three proposals. The first one, in, in no particular order, um, was the Garen Group. The second one was Gellin Benefits Group. And then the last one was Benalytics. Um, noticing exactly what the qualifications format, and I'm not sure if any of the members had the opportunity to look at it. It's on the backup documentations. I noticed that there was a tremendous amount of page shuffling. However, our response only required a maximum of 30 pages. Well, in that committee, there were several members. I think we had the deputy chief of police, the deputy chief, fire chief. We had the risk manager. We had the HR manager. Um, and one other individual, I can't recall who it is, but particularly um, there was a lot of discussion regarding one respondent not going far enough to explain it. Well, I, along with, at that time, I believe it was assistant city manager, Mr. Jacobs, who I had made aware of my concerns prior to the meeting was sitting inside of the meeting and she, you know, I shared with her some of the concerns that the evaluation committee members had said, which completely in effect members reconstituted an evaluation criteria um, saying that, well, this respondent didn't have this. And when I'm looking at the evaluation criteria, that's not even encompassed in there. And I shared that information with the assistant city manager. And at that time, Mr. Jonathan Evans, the city manager himself, came down and we stepped outside and I had a brief conversation with him as well as with legal on the phone. Well, to my surprise, a few days later, when I was finally provided a copy of all of the responses and I watched the video again, I realized that there was a tremendous deviation in the required documents and the scores that was actually posted. And I brought this information back to Ms. Jacobs, who, as we all know, at this point in February was overseeing or acting in that role of director of procurement. And um, we've had several conversations and I've told her specifically, like um, if our, and this is fundamentally, this is what it is. If our responses according to the solicitations are limited to a maximum of 30 pages, how do we have a respondent that has 80 pages, one that has 146 pages 
and for whatever reason they're not deemed non-responsive by staff and to my surprise when looking back at the video one of the evaluators said particularly Gellin Benefits Group did not go far enough in explaining or their proposal didn't meet the depth and breadth of the others and I'm saying to myself considering that he was limited to 30 pages how is that possible and this is solely a conversation that I, I shared with Miss Deirdre Jacobs. Well, to my surprise, I found out two days ago that the city receives this letter, and I'm not sure if this was provided in the backup. Miss Hall, was this shared in the backup documents, this bid protest letter? Yes, I did attach it. It should be there. Yes. Okay, so member Cohen, one question. When was the backup put on the on here? Because it wasn't there this morning when I looked. Within the last few hours. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it until now. So. Yeah, well, when I called the special meeting, um, Vice Chair, I asked if they could attach the backup documentation so that members can follow along. So I'll, um, I, I'll try to shortcut it. But if you look at the backup documentation, I thought it was pretty interesting because the very thing that I brought up is specifically was what was rejected, what was addressed in this protest letter. But I will give you the real short version, but I think if you look at it, it starts at paragraph D. As delineated in the RFP documentation, all responses were mandated to adhere to a strict maximum page limit of 30 pages. And this protester says, we complied. Notably on RFP 19, the RFP specifies, and quote, responses shall be limited to a maximum of 30 pages, eight and a half by 11 page size, type size, not less than 11 point size font and margin shall be one inch per the documents. I received the Garen group violated the maximum page limit laid out in the requirements. In fact, their total proposal totals 146 pages. This transgression undermines the fairness and the integrity of the competitive bidding process. Gellin group benefits in compliance with the specific guidelines significantly curtailed our content, limiting our response to 29 pages in addition to the city's required form. And there's m more information in there that talks about it. But here's what my concern is. I just think it's very interesting that I find ourselves right here in this same position. And I have a list of all of the solicitations that I particularly have been a part of, either set in or had some um, involvement in outside of us sitting at a regular meeting. But the bid protest was submitted on March 20th. And looking at the solicitation, the solicitation specifically calls out what the process is when a bid protest comes in. Well, staff and specifically the manager, and I think he's gonna be able to have his staff come up and speak to it. But on the very next day, um, city administration and procurement made the decision to cancel all benefits, excuse me, cancel the solicitation and um, I guess seemingly to go out in the future. But I, I really wanted to bring this up because this is very interesting because this isn't the first time that this has happened. In fact, according to my count, I got about eight different occasions where we've canceled solicitations purely because of um, some sort of issue of, or error on our part. Now, I'm not sure if this is a coincidence but certainly um, this is becoming a routine problem. And I wanted to address this specifically because the very language that's in this letter is exactly what I'm sitting here thinking. Because back in October, I shared this with Mr. Evans and he's aware of this. You know, I set in the property and casualty insurance um, broker of record in the same exact thing. We had some procedural issues where the whole evaluation committee had to be canceled. I'm sitting in the waiting room and nobody ever admits me into the meeting. All of our meetings are governed by 186. If I can take you back to 2022, in the late part of 2022, I'm watching an investment manager solicitation where staff decides to adjourn the meeting and go into the back room and tallies the votes. I mean, this is Florida in the sunshine and there's no circumstances in which any person can actually go into a back room and total votes. And this is becoming a regular and routine occurrence. And I really feel for people who spend hours and time and money that submits to our proposals. So members, if you just roll with me for one second, this solicitation that I'm speaking of that's in front of us is 1118-24-1, the broker of record for group insurance. Prior to that, the other item was the broker of record for property and liability insurance, which 
in my opinion, resulted in a Sunshine Lab violation because I couldn't even get into the meeting. I had to call into staff to tell them that I was in the waiting room. And when I finally got admitted, they told me the meeting was over. And I'm saying to myself, how's that possible? So if I can't get in, can you imagine the other four respondents that have spent time, effort, and energy in actually submitting a proposal couldn't even get into the very meeting where they're being evaluated on their proposals? If I can take you back just last month, we had two solicitations that went out on the street and were all within a day that were canceled. And that's janitorial services as well as security guard services citywide. Um, I already spoke of the 2022 investment manager solicitation. Um, October 2023, City Hall P3 solicitation. We had one respondent that was canceled. The 2600 Broadway solicitation, we had four respondents. And then again, because of staff error, that was canceled. If I can take you back two years now um, to 2022, we had our solid waste services in which we had two respondents. And when that came in, we had staff error on that and that too was canceled. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but we have a role and a duty being elected officials, but more importantly, having co corporate governance over this organization that we ensure that this process is done right. And, you know, I, I certainly want to address the other two items on the agenda, but for me, this is an issue. Me as an elected official sitting in the room, I'm being deprived of the information. That's a public record, and I can't get to days later. Secondly, staff, for whatever reason, be it lack of training or error on their part, I don't know how you can almost go five times the minimum page limit, well, I'm sorry, the maximum page limit and be, be deemed, well, not be deemed non-responsive. Fundamentally, this is local government. If you can't follow the rules, I don't see an avenue for you to even do business here. And that's true for everybody. And I think I've been very much um, particularly about following the rule in the of, of our code of ordinances. Now, the other thing that is very important, members, that I want to call your attention to, and this is where I had issues with staff. Seemingly, for whatever reason, staff chose not to cancel the solicitation when I first brought this to them. But if this evaluator chose, or this proposer chose to protest, our option shouldn't be to cancel the bid. If you have the solicitation in front of you, page 15 calls out the process in which a proposer or respondent chooses to protest, rights to protest, an actual or prospective proposal, offer, or consultant who is aggrieved in connection with the solicitation of an award or contract may protest to the city council. And let me start off by saying this section is called right to protest, not possible protest. You have a right to protest. If you spend your time, effort, and, and you want to propose, you have a right to protest. And it goes on to say, the proposal, the request for proposal, unless the agreed person did not know or could not have reasonably been, been expected to know of the facts giving rise to such protests prior to the bid opening or the closing date for the requested proposal, the protest shall be submitted within five days after such agreed person known, persons known or could have reasonably been expected to know. Most important, the last bullet point, and this is straight out of our code, 16.5-241, stay of procurement during protest. In the event of a timely protest under subsection A of this section, the director of procurement shall not proceed further with the solicitation or award of the contract until all administrative remedies have been exhausted. Well, members, that's the problem. We had a, a, a proposal and who in good faith came in and submitted a proposal saw issues with the proposal in the same fashion that I did, saw issues with staff not being diligent in deeming firms either non-responsive, and they actually submitted a timely bid protest, only for our team and our administration to come back and cancel it. I don't understand what I said. Members, we have wrestled with folks even coming to the table to do business with us, to the point that we've had one and two respondents on many of our major solicitations. And if I can remind you, 2,600 is probably the most important. I think we started off with five, and once we canceled and went back out, we came back with two. And that's because people lose confidence in this very process. And particularly, 
not only is this wrong, but morally, this is wrong per our code. There was not a stay of procurement during this protest. So I wanted to bring this to the members' attention because you have created a situation where now you've disenfranchised uh, a proposal who in good faith spent time and effort in putting this together, and now our only option is to cancel this. And I want to make sure that the board understands and is aware of what we have before us because this shouldn't be the case. And I want to speak specific to this um, evaluation. So, Mr. Chair, that is the reason that I called for this meeting, and I would welcome um, the board members to give feedback as well as the manager to provide a response from staff. Um, Chair. Mr. Chair. Ms. Lanier. Yes. Um, I just want to say that, you know, we had a 24 hour notice for this meeting. There are hundreds of pages of backup for this meeting that came out about two hours ago. To wade through hundreds of pages of documents in an hour and a half. Um, to be able to speak intelligently and correctly about something as important as this. And Mr. Mr. McCoy, uh, you are always saying how it you get information at the last minute that you know you don't have time to look at it. And it, it, it's just kind of disingenuous of you to call a meeting for this and give us two hours notice to be able to go through hundreds of pages of documents and to be able to intelligently make a decision about it. I can't even comment on it really because I just knew this morning what it was. I asked procurement for some information. They sent some, but mind you, I had no idea that this was going to be um, something in terms of um, having to wade through a lot of documents. I do that because the agenda comes out on a Thursday or a Friday before the Wednesday of a meeting. That gives me days to wade through hundreds of pages of documents and to be able to speak clearly, loudly, and correctly about a subject. But the way that this has been presented to us, it is very disingenuous for you to expect that we could have any kind of feedback for you when we have not even been um, apprised of what it is. Now we know what it is after we got to the meeting, and you said that the documents came out two hours ago, but that gives us no time, Mr. McCoy, to be able to have a, a conversation about this. And I know that this is very important. Um, it is very important. I'm concerned about the cone of silence. I'm concerned about how this did get canceled. I'm concerned about it all, just as you are. But to come here at 4.30 on a Friday afternoon and have to discuss something that I have not even had the chance to wade through it's not fair to me or my other board members to be able to have this kind of conversation. These people who put in um, bids for this particular item, um, you know, they lose confidence because they see these meetings. That's where the confidence loss comes from. The shenanigans at these meetings, the things that happen at these meetings. We cannot present ourselves to the public as if we are in disarray. <laughs> Because we, you bring us to a meeting and we are in disarray because we have no idea what it is because we don't know, we have not read it. And I would like time to be able to read it because you say this every single time. You don't give me enough time to read the documents. You don't give me enough time. You get the last minute. You always, so I, I, I just think that you bringing this to us in a 24 hour notice in a two hour in, in terms of backup, it's just, that's just not how we do business. And I would think that you would want all of us to be able to talk about this project. I think that you would want all of us to be able to have read the documents, to be able to know for ourselves what's happening. So now we're hearing information from you. Then, of course, Mr. Evans is going to give some background, but that still did not give me the time to go through it myself. I want my own opinion. I want to be able to formulate my own reasons and ask my own questions. But I can't even formulate questions now because I have not read any of these hundreds of documents. So I just think it's really just disingenuous for you to put us in this spot and put us on, you know, just put us in a situation right now where I can't even comment on it because I just have not read it. I have two hours to even look at it. And it's just very, very disheartening to do something like this to your board members. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Recognize Mr. Lawson first. 
Thank you. Um, and I would have to echo those sentiments. Um, I understand the sense of urgency, but I don't see this as an emergency to where we have to call our residents, our staff, and your colleagues to come at 430 on a work day to discuss holding this meeting during work hours with 24 hour notice. Um, if you've said this has been a routine action and regular routine and an occurrence, it could have been properly noticed with at least seven day notice, giving your colleagues and the residents enough time to come and discuss this occurrence. And when I got this phone call to sign this notice, I had no idea that we were going to go into this kind of depth. Um, and that is when I was noticed, advised of this. So I am concerned where I have no information to review and I just did some due diligence today with speaking with staff, but it's very limited and that's just not fair to the responding bidders, the bidders that were thrown out, whatever the cone of silence, if we're in one or not, if it was discharged, I just don't have all the information today. And colleagues, um, Chairman Spiritus and Mr. McCoy, I, I want us to be very um, mindful of all the eyes that have always been on the city. It's continuing to realize that we are under the microscope and we're gonna continue to be under the microscope. So our goal is to make sure that we're prepared as best as possible. And I, I try to do a very good job with being prepared for these meetings. And I can honestly say this is one of the first times I have not been prepared because I was just given the backup an hour and a half ago. So I don't want to be put in this position, but I did a, go ahead and vote to approve the meeting because I want to make sure that we can have all voices heard when we have close to 100 residents here tonight. And I wanted to hear my colleagues' concerns. But I, I don't want to be put in a position where this is not an emergency. It is very urgent, but it's an item that could have been reviewed at next week's meeting with seven day notice or at the first meeting in April. So that would be my sentiments that I want us to just try to be understanding of our colleagues schedules and times and also the urgency that we have uh, councilman and Mr. and board chair is that we have to hold our staff accountable for this because this is a staff issue. Ultimately, staff should be handling this concern. And if they're not doing their job, we can do that and have the discussion. And I'm assuming that's why we have interim evaluation of city manager performance and review in addition to this item. So I'm hoping that that'll be part of the discussion. But to go into too much depth uh, with only having limited information is going to be difficult for me today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Pro Tem Miller Anderson. The First, I want to say that an email was sent to us at 3.53 p.m. and at 4.05 p.m. regarding the agendas being posted. So I don't think it was posted a couple of hours ago. It was just within the past hour. Um, the other thing is, as I'm clicking on these links, some of these links, do they have errors, so I can't even pull them up. That first one, evaluation committee evaluation scores, there's an error. I can't see that. Um, then the last one, which is the um, broker record for employee group insurance plans, that's showing an error. So I don't have all of the information, even though it's supposed to be there. Um, you know, I mean, I have the same sentiments and, and I voted no because, I mean, first of all, the meeting's at 430 and I don't recall a time where we've ever had a public city meeting um, at 430 in the afternoon. The earliest we've ever had meetings was around 530. And I just, I, I don't understand why we did it so quickly. Um, I obviously have not had an opportunity to read any of this. I do understand what you're speaking of, Mr. McCoy, and why it's important. But I don't think this is something that we should have been trying to do at 4.30 in the afternoon and not giving us an opportunity to read the information, which I'm still not able to get right now. So. I certainly want to hear and be aware of all of the information and we can address that, but I can't do that right now because I don't have it. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? If there are none, we'll move on to public. Mr. Law, Mr. So, uh, so, so, Mr. Chair, if I can respond. Go ahead. Thank you. So members, I, I certainly understand your concerns. Why it's not posted, um, as you know, this meeting was called three o'clock or so yesterday afternoon. I shared with the clerk the uh, items that I wanted to have placed on the agenda. So, you know, I understand your concern about uh, not having the information and unreadiness, and I would certainly encourage that. Uh, so I will own that. However, I don't accept the fact that you would call it disingenuous. Disingenuous represents that 
there's some sort of deceit or something like that. I was outraged, number one, um, to even see that this happened because no one seemed to even give me the, the, the didn't even warrant a response. I've been literally asking about this issue for a month and it wasn't until a proposer actually filed a bid protest that we find ourselves in this situation. So whether you're not inclined to make a decision, I certainly would love to hear from staff as to why it takes a proposer to file a bid protest and what was the process and what did, you know, like how did we arrive here? Because clearly once a protest is filed, there should be a stay, not a cancellation. So whether we take action or not, I would hope that the board is inclined to at least hear from Mr. Evans and his staff as to how we arrived at this situation. Because other than that, I mean, we're gonna reconvene here and discuss the same thing again, but this item is, I would say, very urgent in fact, I was looking at the previous broker of record contract, and this literally is less than two months away before its expiration. So I would encourage the members to at least allow staff to, um, from procurement and administration to respond to what occurred here and why they necessitated, why they think it necessitated a cancellation of the solicitation. Um, Chair? Yes, Mr. Lynn here. Um, yeah. It, it, the same goes for the staff. You know, it's been 24 hours for them as well. You, I, you know, you can't pay, bring people up here and badger them and give them 24 hours to come in and come up with all kind of answers for you. You have to give people time enough to be able to. You've asked them questions. You've, I'm sure you've. I've, I've got emails that I'm looking at now that you've you've asked procurement for documentation. So you know the questions to ask. The thing about it is that we don't know. So to bring the staff up here to explain what, to explain that this is what happened, I, I want to know more about this RFP process. I want to know more about the proposals. I want to know more about the evaluation committee, the methodology that was used to come up with these scores. And before I know that, the staff is only going to be talking about something I don't know about. So it, it's, 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 you cannot ask the staff to come and badger them about something that happened, you know, that you, you're asking for 24 hours in terms of what, what has happened, because it seems as if it's a big deal. It seems as if it's very important, but to give someone 24 hours notice to be able to come and, um, you know, talk about this and we don't know it, it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. It just really doesn't make any sense. And I'm glad that you brought it to our attention. I'm glad that now we can look into this but to bring staff, and I'm sure I'm prepared as we are, to be able to talk about this is not in the best interest of the city. It is not in the best interest of the proposals. The people who put these proposals in, getting half information and not being, not being able to get our input to it. So the staff saying what they need to say is no more any good than us up here not knowing what's happening. So we Please need- Please hold your comments. Please hold your comments in the audience and let the council members speak. Thank you. So it needs to be a situation where the staff and the council is prepared because we don't want to, um, because clearly it could have been a mistake here, which means that if there was- If you keep speaking while the council member speaks, you will be removed. Please let the council members have their time. So if, if the, if the, if the, if the, um, if the staff and the council is not prepared to be, because I'm sure there, need, this, there needs to be a presentation with this, because this seems, it's, it's very important. It seems as if there are people involved in terms of protest bids. We, we don't have time for little pieces of information today. We need to be able to know everything was happening with this, because this is very important. And if you say that there's been eight other proposals that have been canceled or RFP, then there's a problem. But we can't solve it today without any information. So I want the staff to be prepared and I want us to be prepared to have this discussion and to finish it when we have it. Thank you, Councilman Warner. Any other comments from the city council members? Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Lawson. If I could just, um, if we could have a discussion or actually just make a motion to have this item table to our next regular meeting so that this can give staff and the council enough time to prepare for it and have more discussion. Is there a motion? Yes, so moved. Yes. 
That was a motion. I second it. Clerk, please roll. Call the roll. Uh, we have public comment, don't we? Well, we, do have public well, we have a motion on the uh, floor right now. Councilor, don't we have to vote on if there's a, a motion on the floor first? Thank you. Please, please call the vote. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair if I may. Bef um, yes, Mr. Yes. Manager. But before the board takes any action, you have to uh, furnish the opportunity for the public to be able to comment. Okay. Thank you. Uh, public comments. Uh, please be reminded the city council board has adopted rules of decorum governing public comment, uh, public conduct during our official meetings, which has been posted at the front desk. In an effort to preserve order in, in any of the rules are not adhered to, the city council chairperson may have any disruptive speaker or attendee removed from the podium, from the meeting and from the building if necessary. Please govern yourselves accordingly. But I just want to remind you that in your packet, uh, public comment shall be addressed to the city council as a whole and not to any individual on the dais or in the audience. Displays of anger, rudeness, ridicule, impatience, lack of respect or personal attacks are strictly prohibited. So please govern yourselves accordingly. Small. So, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm a little confused. The what is this our general public comment that we're doing, or is this just for the 12? This is for item 12A. Sorry. So I know we just made a mo they just made a motion to table it, but the way that it's written here, are we looking at this item as 12AA? -A, and then the next thing is going to be 12AB? Because there's three items under one right now on this agenda. We only have a 12A. It should be 12A. I guess that would be 12AB and 12AC. But that's not how it's written. Right, it says A, B, and C under 12A. It really should have been 12A, 12B, and 12C. So there's three different items under discussion and deliberation. Um, Chair, it, yes. it, it seems that these are three separate issues here. There's an issue about procurement, there's an issue about the evaluation of the city manager, and there's an issue about the evaluation of the city attorney. I think that these are three separate issues. I, I agree with you. Right, we have separate comment cards for each one. So the um, first group of speakers will be speaking on procurement RFP 1118-24-1. Can may I make a suggestion? I think we need to explicitly make this 12A, 12B, 12C, and we probably should have done it at the very beginning of the meeting because as it stands, this is one item, which is 12A, and all three are falling up under there. So I don't know how we need to correct that, but that needs to be corrected because that is not how we typically write 12A, 12B, 12C. Council, can we do a, uh, a motion to clarify the agenda at this time? So moved. First of all, well, procedurally, first, first let's hear need... from the council whether we could do that. You don't need a motion to clarify the agenda. Okay. We could just pull it out. You just blow. Just pull comments on one item. It's not another motion as needed. We already have a motion on the table. Okay, so we're we're going to consider you, this twelve. We're going to consider this a. Okay, so a. item twelve a is procurement RFP number one 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 eight dash two four dash one, broker of record for employee group insurance plans, item twelve b is interim evaluation of city manager performance and employment contract. Item 12C is interim evaluation of city attorney performance and employment contract. So we are now on public comment for item 12A. And the first speaker is Anna Verdne, followed by Lady Goldwire and Cindy March. My name is Anna Vergne and I live at Lakeview Park. Um, and I think the, the council persons do agree that there's a special meeting process 
that warrants a certain amount of time for them to review their documents. But I think the issue is not a McCoy issue. The issue here, which I believe all of you agree on, right, is that there's a certain process that has been re that repeatedly has failed to, to be followed by the administration and that is critical to the integrity and the process in which we procure contracts in the city, and that is critical. Um, when we talk about sunshine laws and employees breaking sunshine laws, that's critical. Um, when we speak, um, Mr. Lawson mentioned that the meeting today is a staff issue. I think the issue is becoming that repeatedly is being brought up. The process is not being followed. He named the amount of times that is not being followed, and it doesn't matter, right? He spoke to Deidre Jacobs, he spoke to Mr. Evans, and here we are again, right? And you guys all agree the process is not being followed, but yet, what are we doing about it? I thank all of you for your feedback, but the truth is, this is critical because nobody, people are not coming to the city to work. Contractors are going to sue us if this procurement process is not followed, and that's urgent. We don't need another lawsuit. I definitely don't want it out of my pocket, which is where it's going. Out of everybody's pocket here. Um, you know, we really, when we talk about administrative process, this totally undermines that that process is being followed. We co I come up here every time I'm in this city and I ask for accountability of this administration and you guys fail to do that each and every time because I haven't seen it and it needs to stop. I'm asking each and every one of you to make it stop. Mrs. Miller, Mr. McCoy, the new chairperson, Mr. Lawson, you admitted that today. Ms. Lanier, you mentioned it yourself. The staff doesn't have time. To go. Well, guess what? They didn't load up the information on time. That is not a McCoy issue. It's a staffing administrative issue. I am not trying to um, pick on any um, council members at all. I love and appreciate each and every one of you, and you guys are all doing great for our community but we need to hold the staff accountable. Thank you, Anna. Members of the public, please know that comment, acceptance of public comment cards, again, is now closed for item 12A. Next is Lady Goldwire, Cindy March, and Adam Fetterman. Hi, Lady Goldwire. Um, I wanna first off say that this is how residents feel when we try to access the information for the agendas, and we are given paperwork, but reverted to a system that is relegated on accessing a computer system with links, et cetera. Sometimes the links are inoperable. Sometimes the information doesn't go back to them. And the same level of unpreparedness that you guys are sitting there with, baffled by, is what we often have to contend with when we're out there. Most often, we have to take your word for it. I recognize that each of you have jobs, but a lot of you are entrepreneurs and you do have downtime and the flexibility to do exactly the same thing that Mr. McCoy is doing. Why is it that he is someone who is saying, I've been sitting in most of these procurement processes and I see these deficits and nobody else has made any mention of it. Nobody else has caught it. Why is he the only one? I'm not saying he's the only one working, but it seems to be he's the one that's always pulling back the veil on these things that we all should know. And then when he does it, because we don't like the messenger, we throw the message in the garbage too. I know that in the instances where I've applied to a, a RFQ, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of hours to have that stuff put forth and have it then thrown out because there has been some sort of deficit on the part of the individuals composing it, it is very unfair. I don't necessarily believe that we have to have a situation where you have to resort to using terms like, for lack of a better term, disingenuousness. We have operated in a space of 
being in genuine for so long, it's not even funny. You're going to continue to have balls dropped in these major departments like procurement, like utility district, when you do not have directors. Why are the director positions vacant so long? Or why, when we fill the director positions, do they not stay filled? What is happening? These people can't watch everything. Ms. Jacobs can't be the utility director and the interim procurement director and the interim whatever. Mr. Evans can't manage all of the things at the same time and there not be balls dropped. I'm not for anybody losing their job. Times are hard and things are expensive. You need to try to get as much money as you can when you can, so long as it's not hurting anybody else. But to not put emphasis on filling these positions and then to be sitting up here saying, you know, we need more time to prepare. You guys have made more critical decisions at 11 o'clock at night without noticing the public without a whole lot of time to prepare. It's happened. So I think if you don't like something or you don't like the individual who's saying something, say that. But don't make it seem like it's just, there's no point to it. Thank you, lady. Adam Fetterman, Cindy March, Adam Fetterman, and Kurt Gehring. the council. I'm Cindy March. I'm a little different. He needs to lose his job again because he shouldn't be holding two positions. No way. He shouldn't even be in the city of Rivera Beach, period. I don't care how nobody feel about it. How many times have we come? This is a hypothetical question I need from all of you all. How many times you all had called a special meeting and not show up and we come over there to the little place over there on Singer Island, or we come here and it's nobody here because it wasn't enough corn to hold a meeting. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And how many times big developers come in here, how many times some of the employees come in here and give a two hour presentation and they need it right now. And guess what? They get it right then. When you set a rule, I have a thing with setting a rule. You must set it for everybody. I dealt with that at the precincts. Tuesday. I was like Rosa Parks. I wasn't letting them pull up no sign. Period. But some individuals on the board, out campaigning, uh, say, pull up Leroy signs. The election is over. Congratulations again to you, Kashama Miller. But, see, I don't throw rocks and hide my hands. I call a spade a spade. Period. Whether you for a person or not for a person, be true to yourself. Because people don't come to this meeting, they are watching. I have not done plenty of those. They're sick and tired and they're tired and sick. That's why they're not here. But don't think they don't go to the ballot box. A lot of people don't vote because they're tired of the same old, same old. You can hate Trudge's temperament, but Trudge does his homework. Maybe he don't get it across the way y'all want him to. I'm the same way. I don't show no pleasant trees. I know how to speak when I need to speak. I know how to be street when I need to be street. But you all got to be fair to the people that you all work for because you all work for us. We don't work for you all. Y'all need to take that same energy and find out about this clean water here, period. Affordable housing. It's much more needed things than to put your blame on Trojan because he don't done the homework. Y'all can have two months and still don't know what to do. Because you're too stuck on personal vendellas. Let's get away from that if we're going to move this city forward. I don't care who you are. Thank you, Ms. March. Next is Adam Fetterman, Kurt Gehring, and Mike Salen. Mr. Are you Mr. Gary? Okay. Mr. Fetterman waved. No. Okay. Uh, good evening. I just wanted to start by saying thank you. My name is Kurt Gehring uh, from the Gehring Group. We're the, your current um, agent of record for um, City of Rivera Beach. Uh, not only thank you for the time, but also thank the time for the committee that got together to actually rank these proposals. There was a lot of time spent, and I appreciate the fact that this is a very complicated issue in not only our contract, but we also probably help you with negotiating the largest contract, you, one of the largest contracts you have, which is your employee benefits and health insurance. Our firm um, is the largest producer of insurance coverages for municipalities in the state. And I just wanted to say two things. Number one, as far as 
Um, the contract coming up for two months, we have no problem extending the contract to make sure that you have enough time to feel comfortable with the final decision on this. And number two, um, rejecting our proposals is kind of the what we live in since all we do is public sector. As a matter of fact, City of Lakeland right now, we're going, we were bidding for them and they reject the proposal. So it, it, because we do public sector, we know that this is part of the process to make sure that everybody has a voice and everything is done fairly. And I just wanted to make sure I got up here and said that. And also say that your contract is extremely important to us and, and appreciate the dialogue this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Saloon. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Mike Gellin, Gellin Benefits Group. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I want to thank you all for being here today. Uh, as a former elected official, I know how difficult it is to stop in the middle of a day and come to an emergency meeting. Um, we did bid on this contract and we were satisfied with the results of the contract. We made a public records request because whenever we lose a contract, we want to know what we did wrong. We want to see what a winning proposal looks like. Um, so when we got the proposal, we immediately noticed that uh, the other, the, the winning proposer um, did not follow the requirements, the qualifications of the 30 page limit. And then when I listened to the discussion by the selection committee, uh, my firm was criticized for not being comprehensive as the others, but we were not as comprehensive because we were trying to stick with that 30 page limit. So we wanted to respect the process. We wanted to respect the rules. And it appears that we were harmed for doing that. Um, we understand that uh, the city reserves the right to throw out RFPs. Uh, I've seen, seen that done, but that does hurt smaller businesses like our business. There is a cost, there is time that goes into uh, submitting a proposal. Uh, we successfully handled the insurance for the city of Miramar, city of Boynton Beach, city of Laurel Lakes, and other public agencies. Um, and it's just the, the matter of having a fair process, having equity of that process, and respecting the process. And, and this is somewhat urgent because in the rejection letter, it said that a new RFP would go out on March 27th. Um, and basically, when someone is not responsive or responsible, in most cases, they go to the next bidder. So we came in second. We feel that the next process should be to eliminate the first rank uh, proposer and go to the second rank proposer, which is us, the Gellin Benefits Group. So we look for, uh, forward to the further discussion uh, next week. And again, we thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike. Cheryl Edwards. Cheryl Edwards. Your mic I um, really thank everyone. Thank you guys for coming out at 4.30 to make this happen. Pull your but microphone I, down, please. Oh, down, okay. So I do have a question. When Trodrick, how he's prepared, and we all know he always is, all he said to the group was, let's hear from the staff. So we could have at least asked the staff, hey, guys, are you prepared to answer this question? But no one said that because of where it was coming from. And Trodrick he is a very, he's very thorough. He's, he is who he is. He got elected off of those things. Um, true enough, maybe not everyone likes the way he does things, but he does them and he gets things done. But fair enough, fair is fair. We came, we all came out for this meeting and at least we should be able to ask the staff, are you prepared to answer the question? It's the minimum that they can do because it is 540 and we still have, we're still talking, but no one has even posed the question. And when I said it, this person said, oh, you're going to get kicked out. And I'm like, dude, I've lived here 51 years and you just recently moved here. So, you know, I'm thinking, how could he say that about me? But anyway, my question is, is that we should at least ask the staff if they are prepared in any way, shape, or form to answer the question. That's all I want to know. Um, that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Hall. That is the end of public comment for item 12A.
Mr. McCoy. Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, so I appreciate the comments um, from the from the uh, members of the public. I would again ask the members to indulge me. Here's why. Today is March 22nd. My questions have been outstanding for over a month. And I subscribed to Demand Star and I got that same cancellation notice. And it suggests that we're going to reissue this in five days. Members, the question that I have is how is that possible? From the plain language of our own code, a bid protest causes a stay. So even if the members, which we, you know, the majority has the prerogative to do so, choose not to hear from staff, I would encourage and I would really plead with you to allow staff to respond. But in the alternative, if it's the board's desire not to allow staff to respond, then I would respectfully ask that we allow staff not to move forward with this because there's no sense of reissuing something if we have a lingering issue that's standing, that's hanging over us. So um, th that's where I'm at. I, I just would love that, you know, my work is not in vain here. I particularly have been a part of these groups and proposals and submitting for county contracts. And it means a lot to me that my organization can match up to the level of service and the work that the school district does when they issue these or the level of service that the county does, because I know that they have this down like a sewing machine and it shouldn't be that I in my own city have to expect less than the best or some watered down version of a solicitation process, especially when I'm affected because, you know, thankfully, right? After all of the phone calls, we as elected officials enjoy the health insurance benefits. I think you're probably gonna have to get some wellness and you know all the other things, but not only that, it's a cost to the residents, and more importantly, me as a licensed insurance agent in both, in uh, a 215 and a 220 license, it's important that I make sure that we're doing the right thing and we should be measuring the same standard that some of the other larger uh, organizations are. So members, again, if it is the board's desire not to hear from staff, you know, I respect that. However, I will respectfully ask that we should not further prejudice or disenfranchise someone who's availed themselves of our code process by moving forward with issuing another solicitation. I would ask that we have um, respect our code and, and allow the stay, and then we can schedule this for an opportunity for it to come back. Um, meanwhile, right, it's very interesting, and I got to remind you that I've been outstanding here for over 30 days. This was February 20th that I left from my work to come and listen to a proposal, and I heard the very things that you know, um, Mr. Uh, Gellin spoke of. So that's what I have, Mr. Chair. I would ask that we direct staff not to move forward with issuing a new solicitation because obviously you guys want to hear it because if we're going to move forward, then what's the purpose of us hearing it, right? But Mr. Coy, I, I understand now why the emergency, obviously March 27th is upon us. Uh, I would uh, request that we, that the board so wishes can we poll the board and see if we can postpone this and mr manager uh do we have the ability to postpone uh this bidding um, chair, to give us an opportunity to discuss this again and uh at another meeting but chair, yeah, chair, so. if i can interrupt we had a motion on the floor oh, to yes. table it so we will have to um vote on that one first and then if you want to make another motion after that okay thank you uh, all right but hold on excuse me Point of parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chair. I respect and thank you for your comments, but that doesn't preclude a board member from asking questions. I didn't. All right, we're not passing another motion. We're just asking some more information before we vote on the table. Okay. So, okay. Well, if it's right. a pleasure of the board, Mr. Board. Evans, can can we postpone the bidding procedure uh, to give us enough time to? for your staff and yourself uh, to come back to us and explain the process and give us the ability to discuss it uh, where we have the education, we have all the information and the time to read it. Mr. Chair, if I may, 
Um, at, at minimum, if it is the pleasure of the board, staff can certainly facilitate that particular process. But it also, it, the board has to understand that we would also bring back a recommendation for a contract extension so we don't have a lapse of coverage until uh, that decision is made. The other side of it is, is obviously this is a procurement process and so it's grounded in statute as well as the code. And so um, not all the staff is here to be able to provide a more robust conversation mm -hmm. on that. But if it is uh, brought forward at another date, staff can be prepared accordingly to bring the board up to speed. Okay, Council Davis, will we have an opportunity uh, to pass that motion to extend the existing uh, insurance policies this evening? Mr. Chair, I'm I'm not understanding. Do we have an opportunity to make the motion? Yeah, right. To it was not on the agenda, obviously, to pass a motion to extend the existing contract. Contract. So would we have to come back and do that at another meeting? Or can we do that Mr. as an Chair. extension of the discussion today? Ms. Wynn sounds like she's speaking. Mr. Chair, excuse me. Yeah. This is Dawn Wynn. You have we we would bring back a written contract extension probably at the April fifteenth meeting. I believe that's the date, the second meeting in April. Okay, so, and the policies expire when, Mr. Manager? Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, May fifteenth, I think, is the expiration date. Okay, that's good. Okay, so uh, can you call the vote, Ms. Hall? On the table. So this is the table. Well, well, then we'll pull the board afterwards to bring this back. Well, M Mr. Chair, can we do a better one? Let's just postpone it. When you table an item, it sits on the agenda every single meeting. So, well, Mr. McCoy, we're going to go back and we're going to we're going to pull the board to ask for it to be ask the manager to postpone the bidding process after we vote on the table. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Mr. Hall. Chair. Yes. Mr. McCoy, what were you saying to postpone what the motion that we're getting ready to vote on, right? Or so just to clear up the semantics, instead of using table, right. just to postpone it. Because if it's table, right. it literally is printed on our agenda every single time. I understand that, but I don't think that's what he was talking about. He was talking about polling for the... Polling the board to ask the manager to postpone the bidding process. That's two separate things. Right, that's talking. a separate thing. Right. So who made the motion? Right. There's a motion on the floor. That's what I'm saying. The motion that's on the floor, who made it? I will amend the motion to postpone the item for discussion. Thank you, Mr. Lawson. So the person is seconded to agree? No. Council? Second. I'll second. Second. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Clerk, can you please uh, take the vote? Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Councilperson Lanier? Yes. Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Chair Pro Tem Miller Anderson? Yes. Chair Spiritus? Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Can we now poll the board to uh, request that the city manager uh, postpone the bidding process to give us an ample time to bring this back and to discuss it with staff? Well, we're just doing polling. We're not making a motion right now. We're just polling the board for a directive to the city manager. Mr. Chair, uh -huh. go ahead. I have. Um, I need some clarification on that. So, postponing the bidding process does, does that also mean continuing the stay of the protest and not acting on whether denying or granting the protest that's been filed? Council, well. Ms. Wynn, will that impact the protest at all if we po if we if we postpone that? I guess we could ask. Uh, well, I, I, I guess we can ask the person who submitted the protest. He's here tonight. We do have any objection with us postponing this? Not his. But, uh, your not his. Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Yes. Manager. Yes. Um, Mr. Chair, my recommendation would be that uh, when we do bring this this item back for discussion, that we can put forth uh, some opportunities for um, how we can effectively look to move forward, whether it's a resolicitation or uh, what the code calls for 
uh, concerning the the protest process. And so um, we can we can bring that back and and have a little bit of time for staff to confer and then bring some recommendations for consideration and pathway forward uh, with regards to this particular item. Okay, but, Councilor, when would that impact any litigation? or potential litigation i don't believe so could you say that again please i don't believe so no okay thank you that that was my concern okay uh can you uh clerk can you poll the board please to see whether or not uh, they agree that the city manager should be directed to postpone uh the bidding process to give us ample time to review all the documents have another meeting and have a discussion. Single consensus, Mr. Chair. We don't need okay. to rely on okay. the clerk. Do we have the consensus? So I'm, sorry, I'm, actually, I'm sorry. What it, tell me again what are we actually um, uh, agreeing to right now because there's two different issues on the table. One of them is to postpone this item to come back again for us to have a discussion with staff and with the presentation. Right, that was approved. The other item is for us to um, not proceed with the bid, I mean, not proceed with the with the RFP that's coming out on May 27, 28, to not proceed with that. Um, so what are you asking the city manager? What are you asking us to do at this point? We're asking right now just for consensus to make sure that the city manager postpones the bidding process with respect to the insurance policy to give us ample time, not to put it out March 27th. We want to postpone it from March 27th, because we've been told that we have until May, and the uh, the existing contractor already told us that he'll give us at least a two month extension. Okay, all right, I can I can go for that. Yes, that's fine. We have a consensus. Anybody else? Pro tem, uh, Aunt Miller Anderson. Okay. Mr. Chair. Can okay. We uh, can we do roll call on the postponement and move on? Yes, roll call on the postponement, please. Council person Lanier. Wait a minute, hold on. Then we but we on. voted on this already. Then we, we voted. We, on I this. mean, I thought we we, we did that. Oh, no, just there was now. A, yeah, we we amended the motion and we voted on this already. It's already yeah. been approved, Mr. McCoy. Yes. All right, well, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, we are now on item 12B. Interim evaluation of city manager performance and employment contract. Uh, you will now receive a copy of the employment agreement for Mr. Uh, Jonathan Evans, the city manager. We do not have the evaluation that was completed by the city council members. It was requested from the HR department, but I was informed this afternoon that HR department does not have the evaluations in their office. Okay. Sure. Mr. McCoy. Thank you. So members, um, in light of uh, what we have here, the reason for me adding the 12B, well, adding the item regarding interim evaluation of the city manager um, is regarding the issues concerning procurement. I shared with Mr. Evans, I believe it was on yesterday, my dissatisfaction with why every single proposal, there's an issue. And I am losing confidence in his ability to manage so many different departments and oversee so many different things. And to that point, my question to the city clerk um, office was his evaluation and to my surprise they don't have it and I don't know what that means because I know I certainly submitted mines and we as a board never really convened on this item so I certainly want to know and you know actually I found out from Mr. Evans moments prior to the meeting that he has the evaluation so I'm not sure where the disconnect is but I certainly want to um, have this discussion as to what needs to happen because um staffing and performance is a question of concern for me right now considering these continual systematic um repeats of solicitation and rfp failures by staff i know certainly we've had probably five since 2019 if we count both the assistant city manager and the deputy city manager to hold the role of overseeing the procurement department in itself. That's notwithstanding 
I think we've had about the same number in HR. And I don't expect that anybody's perfect, but I can't sit here and ignore the fact that every single solicitation that I've been a part of has failed. And not only has it failed, I can recognize that mistakes happen. What I can't recognize is the complete disregard for me as a board member. November 2022, I wrote a three-page letter. And respectfully, Mr. Evans was out on paternity leave to the acting um, manager at that time. To date, no one has ever responded. And I pointed out those very issues. And it, you, and I appreciate the speaker. I, I'm not here to impress anybody, right? My only recourse, my only recourse was to seek relief in circuit court regarding these issues. It's been two years that this issue has been outstanding and not one person has sent me anything formal after I wrote a letter to the city pointing out criminal violations of Sunshine Law, complete disregards of our code, and functionally recreating the whole evaluation criteria in the meeting. So I don't know how we can ignore that on top of the fact that everybody gives Mr. Evans high marks. I told you, I want to live up to the same standard that I see in other agencies. And I can't see that we're getting there, right? If we have solicitations after solicitations that keep getting canceled. And I would love the opportunity for the board members to respond, but I know this time is one that we didn't do before in um, having the evaluations come back. And I don't know where that fell through at, but certainly I would love for Mr. Evans to share what that looks like because I never, I, I never seen what the evaluations were for Mr. Evans prior to that. And certainly the clerk's office doesn't have them and HR doesn't have them. So that's why I added this item. And the mere fact is I asked Mr. Evans this question and, and if I can jump to 12C, I don't even know who advises procurement of this issue. Like when they have legal issues, like what happens? Because there's no way that Mr. Evans can hold responsibility of this if there's not anybody giving them proper legal and sound advice on this. So that's why I asked for an interim evaluation of both Mr. Evans as well as the city attorney's office, because this can't continue to happen. And this is only happening in terms of procurement, not even mentioning the other departments where we've had, you know, issue after issue. So that's my reasoning. And I would, Mr. Chair, I'd like to hear from Mr. Evans regarding the evaluations and why HR doesn't have them and certainly the custodian of records. For, for before Mr. Evans, I, I think we should hear from the council first and then hear from Mr. Evans and the other members of the council. Sure. Uh, I just want the public to understand that we are required to do an evaluation uh, of the city manager on a yearly basis. It appears that uh, Mr. McCoy is asking for a biannual or an interim uh, an interim uh, evaluation. Uh, um, just Councilman Lawson, for clarity, I'm not sure if that's what I heard um, in regards to a biannual. I'm I thought I heard, and I thought that was the direction we're going with, um, Mr. Evans. We we haven't seen a his previous annual evaluation, so um, it seems to be have been misplaced. I don't know if we've gotten to a point of asking for a biannual or what the discussion is, but. I'm not sure if that's the question of concern. I just wanted clarity from either um, so we have any, chairman you, or Mr. McCoy. So you haven't seen the last one? You haven't seen the one that, that you were supposed I, to get no, last I'm time just yet. trying to get clarity from Chairman McCoy right. as to what he's what he's asking for. Mr. Today. McCoy? I'm sorry, sure. Mr. McCoy. Yeah, that's correct. I yes. haven't seen it, and that's why I asked the city clerk's office for it. They don't have it. So I know we, at least I did, I know I submitted mine, and I was you know, in, in my opinion, pretty fair in, in my assessment of it, but we never taken that up as a board. Correct. So if it's not held at the custodian, Mr. Evans shared with me prior to the meeting that he has them. So uh, I think that's what needs to be <coughs> communicated and shared yeah. with the board. And Mr. Chair, and that's what I wanted to get clarity. Um, I, I didn't hear anything about a biannual, so I wasn't sure if that was part of a discussion we're planning on having, but I know as of right now, uh, Councilman McCoy uh, would like to know where are the reviews? Because I said maybe mine as well. Okay, so it's not an interim. It's the it's the actual ones that were already prepared. You haven't seen those, Mr. Chair. Please go with me for a second, okay? okay. Follow me. You you no, no, let you me explain. Them, right? Let me explain. When we did an evaluation, we individually submitted them to Human Resources and also, at least for me, a copy to Mr. Evans. 
I check with the clerk's office, who is the custodian of records, who's charged with maintaining all the records. She said that she didn't have it. Her response was she's also checked with the human resources and they didn't have it. That's why I added this item to the agenda. Do we need to do an interim evaluation, especially in light of all of the other items that we've just um, seen just from procurement in itself? So Mr. Evans shared with me just prior to the meeting starting that he has possession of those evaluations that were committed, that were completed by the members. However, to that same point, the board never deliberated or seen these. Like I've never seen what my colleagues did in terms of their evaluation of Mr. Evans, and I'm not even sure exactly what date that one is due um, now that we have the contract. So that's my reasoning for bringing these both of these items up. Okay. I now understand what you meant with interim. Uh, Chair. Yes. Yeah, that's Council what that's Lenin. where I'm, I'm getting this. I'm not sure what we're talking about because we have the evaluations are done yearly. So you're asking for us to do it twice a year? No, I, I was wondering, I knew that it was done already previously. And when Mr. McCoy asked for an interim, I was expecting that he was suggesting we do another review of the manager, but he's not. I think he's, he's suggesting that we see the ones that have already been submitted Gorgeous. and have an opportunity to comment on them. So, Chair, so these two items on the agenda is just to to receive the uh, evaluation from the council because it says interim evaluation of city manager performance and employment contracts. So you're asking us to provide you with our evaluation. Is that what that, was that what we're talking about? Mr. Chair, can I respond? Okay. Thank you. Because I mean, some kind of way when you get it, you take I it out. It. I got it. When I contact the city clerk's office, they did not have an evaluation for the manager. She, in turn, contacted the human resources office or department. They didn't have one. My suggestion is we need to do an interim, not just because it's not one on file. I didn't even know if the other members had submitted theirs. Mr. Evans has shared with me today that he has and is in possession of those. We never have seen those as a body. So my concern is this. If there is an opportunity for us to, and, and I don't know, was that, has it been nine months, Mr. Evans? How long has it been? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, um, pers pers pursuant to my employment agreement, I provide you with a memorandum on May 1st that incorporates the significant accomplishments as well as a copy of my evaluation form that the board did adopt. And then by June 1st, the board is to provide comments on the evaluation. And then that information is then submitted. It doesn't even come to me. It does go straight to HR. HR is in possession of my employment evaluations as when the information was requested, they didn't have possession of it at that particular moment, but they've always had and maintained possessions of my employment evaluations. In addition to- yeah. Please hold, please hold it, your applause. It, it, in addition to Mr. Chair, just for clarity's sake, since the inception of my employment agreement, on I believe two occasions I've brought the item to the board for uh, discussions, and in some cases the item has been postponed or pulled off the agenda, and so the contract doesn't call for a situation where it's placed on the agenda for discussions. So what has been happening, I think, for the last two evaluations is the board submits the evaluations, HR receives the evaluations and says it's in compliance with the contract. And then they provide me with what the tally score is uh, collectively. But the board, the, the HR department does have that information. And the reason that it's not at the city clerk, city clerk's office, it is a part of my employment file. So it is part of the employment record is not part of the regular records that that sit in HR but my my contract is in in human resource or both HR and the clerk's office but that um, so you will be receiving conceivably my well you have to receive it by May 1st of significant accomplishments and the evaluation for that's provided for in the contract thank you mr. Evans. mr. McCoy okay so are we clear as to why because I mean I know we went back and forth. So with that, Ms. Evans, can we be provided with those evaluations as a board? Because certainly I, I have no clue what the other members evaluated. And what good is an evaluation 
it only serves if you what you're suggesting is true it only serves you it doesn't serve the board any good if you receive the evaluations and none of the board shares in the feedback that you receive from other members mr chair if i may go ahead mr evans and 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 i would agree and i attempted to effectively do that but there's a lot of time energy and effort that is put into compiling that information compiling that information and then bringing it before the board. And then it's a situation where the item is not heard or is postponed. And so what we were doing is for the purposes of just saying that evaluations are complete, we can definitely schedule it for a, a discussion item um, when the evaluations are completed and, and the board provide their feedback. That's the process that I've been accustomed to my entire career. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, I'm not sure about everyone else, but I know that mine was sent to uh, Ms. Bartley, who was the HR director or the consultant at that time. So I would have thought everyone would have emailed it to her. At least that was, that was the direction that I was given to send it to her. So I don't know how HR doesn't have it when it was sent to them. Yeah. Mr. Manager, you have a response yeah. to that? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Chair, um, provided for on the evaluation form, it it doesn't even go, uh, the, the form doesn't even go directly to me. It goes to the HR department and Ms. Bartley is in receipt of those particular items. So um, when the request was made, I don't know why the request wasn't fulfilled, but the documents are in HR. They do have copies of the documents. So that's something that we can easily provide that to the board um, later on today or, or well, probably tomorrow. Well. Monday, um, but we can furnish that to the board and you can see the total score as well as the individual board members. Um, Thank you, Mr. Mr. McCoy and council, is that sufficient? Um, Chair? Yes. Yes, Councilman that's Lanier. sufficient because I, I, I sent my evaluation to um, HR. Now tell me, when was this done? I can't remember. I think it was, was it June of last year? July. Mr. Chair? That was um, it's I submitted by May 1st and then the responses are due back for the board by June 1st. Okay. So yes, I did submit that for uh, HR. Thank you, Ms. Lanier. Any other members of the council have any comments? Mr. So, Chair, I'm sorry. We do have public comment on this item also. The acceptance of the cards is closed. Okay, being no other comments from the Council, can we have public comments, please, uh, Ms. Wall? Yes. The first speaker is Louis Bellardo, Robert Jacobs, followed by Emma Horn. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Louis Bellardo. Um, I was expecting that there would be more information provided on that on that particular item in order to have something uh, to respond to. Uh, so at this point, I would simply say that uh, um, I and my family have had uh, no problems, no issues whatsoever with the city manager's office or any of the other staff uh, in the city of Riviera Beach. In fact, we've been really amazed and uh, pleased at the efficiency of the offices that we have dealt with. But that's all I have to say at this point. Thank you for your comment. Robert Jacobs, Emma Horn, Lady Goldwire. I came here expecting to see an evaluation so I could make comments with respect to what might have been found good, bad, or indifferent with respect to Ms. Evans. Uh, I, I have my own views, but um, without seeing what council might be complaining about, uh, I really, I'm gonna waive my right to my own comments now until I can understand, maybe in May or June, I guess, uh, really what council has come to a conclusion of. But I will say that 90% of everything I deal with in the city is um, excellent. I'm not going to give any adverse comment now because I've already made my adverse comments known to the department heads that I had a problem with. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. 
Emma Horn, Lady Gold Wire, and Cindy March. Hi, I signed up to, my name is Emma Horn, Singer Island. I signed up to speak on this um, specifically because I was concerned that there was an emergency meeting called on a Friday night, and quite frankly, I'd rather be out to dinner. Um, but I came here because I thought that there was going to be um, some kind of a vote to try to get Jonathan out of here. And I am extremely concerned if that's where we're going here. He has brought an incredible level of professionalism to this city. He's giving us uh, a lot more positive to talk about on the news than otherwise. Um, congratulations, Glenn, on your new position, unopposed with 24% of the vote. I'm hoping that you, uh, I'm hoping that you uh, support the 76% of us that voted for uh, another candidate, but you were unopposed. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Lady Goldwire, Cindy March, and Julie Botel. Lady Goldwire, um, my comments were, I was also trying to figure out what the meeting was relative to in terms of contracts, who's going, who's staying, and I just wanted to understand the hierarchy from the dais. If the dais only has control over hiring and firing the city manager, and then the city manager is gone, who hires and fires the people who have the more egregious situations that need to be addressed, the people that need to be fired, because you can't fire them from the dais. You need a city manager in place to get that part done. I think if I had an opportunity to get a very different perspective in this last campaign run, and sometimes your children can teach you better. And what my takeaway was when you have an individual at the helm and he's getting four or five different directions and instructions, it makes it difficult for him to do his job. I'm willing to sit everything aside in my opinions, my experiences to the side and lean into that perspective. I think it comes from a place of wisdom. I think at the end of the day, um, Having several different people to answer to makes someone's job very difficult. But also understanding that without him being in place, he can't, you can't do any firing from there. You've got bigger problems. You've got the situation with the water department. You've got some other areas in the city that um, you may need to do some separations or terminations for. I know it's not easy having been terminated. I know that at the end of the day, somebody's got to be in place to do that job. You've got finance. You've got a whole lot of things that in places and spaces that rub people the wrong way. And I think you need a city manager in place, someone with knowledge to be able to do that. And so, again, if someone can clarify that my line of thinking is correct, you guys cannot fire staff. You need the city manager to do that. So that's just a question. I'm putting it out there. Um, Mr. Evans, we did speak on yesterday, and I know you promised me a phone call. I didn't get it. Um, that was a little disappointing. However, I will say your department did get me halfway to the finish line, and I'm appreciative of that. Um, I know that a lot of people are here because they're looking for you know, it to be a big fight and everything to be a big deal. You can get a million and one people out here when it comes to whether or not you're going to be hired or fired, but you can't get anybody out here for the things that are truly impacting us as it stands. And I'm just baffled by that. Thank you, lady. Cindy March, Julie Botel, and followed by J.B. Dixon. Good evening, Councilor Cindy Marge. I'm not going to stand up here and pacify Ms. Evans, period. When she was terminated, Ms. Evans wasn't here. They had an intern. They got one now. So anybody need to be fired can be fired with or without Mr. Evans, period. What goes around comes around. He should be appreciative of whoever's for him that he got back here. Then he didn't only get by here by one position. He has two positions, so therefore he cannot do two good jobs and have great performance. 
So please, let me reiterate, it can be done with him or without him, period. I want to see him gone, period. Because what's good, I say, for the goose is good for the gander. Y'all can rave up in here for this kind of foolishness, but tell these people how they're going to get some clean water to clean them free turkeys. We got enough to worry about that's positive than to worry about, well, if you get rid of him, who going to fire who? Who fired you? Thank you for your comment. Julie Botel, J.B. Dixon, and Anna Vergne. I am Julie Botel. I live on Singer Island, Riviera Beach. I thought I was, I thought I was into my retirement. Here I am back again on a Friday night. <laughs> but I'm really here because I was concerned that the council was going to take some precipitous action this evening. I'm, I'm glad to have an inkling that maybe they're not going to. But I'm still here to speak in support of City Manager Jonathan Evans and his continuation as the leader of our city's administration. Please remember that it wasn't too long ago that we were known as a city in turmoil. We don't want to go back there. Absolutely nothing of substance had taken place prior to Jonathan's return to the city. Since his return, we've been moving in a positive direction for an, on a number of fronts. <clears throat> there had been much talk about building a new city hall. Did that ever happen? No, but it's going to happen now under Jonathan Evans' leadership. There had been much talk about problems with the water. In fact, for decades, there were problems with the water, and yet city council and the city administration kicked that can down the road until we're now in a crisis situation with our water treatment plant, and we have to build a new one, and we are building a new one. Did anyone do anything about that prior to Jonathan coming back? No. But now the plans for the new plant are well underway, and building will commence in the near future. Remember our library at 600 West Blue Heron had so much mold that the librarians couldn't even work there. It was Jonathan Evans who had the foresight to purchase the building that now houses our collection and provides for so many opportunities for our children and families to engage in workshops and classes. And the condition of the fire stations, those stations were a disgrace. The mold and the crumbling ceilings were a danger to the first responders who were forced to live in circumstances not fit for human habitation. Did anyone do anything about that? No. It took Jonathan Evans to make that happen. And now we will have fire stations 88 and 87, about which we can all be very, very proud. And most recently, it was through the dedication of Jonathan Evans and Randy Sherman, presenting at numerous community meetings to explain the importance of passing the bond referenda, that we will now have a police station, a new fire station on Singer Island, and the athletic facilities we so sorely need. In spite of orchestrated opposition by a small faction of the community, the voters passed those bonds with a wide margin. Congratulations, Mr. Evans and staff, for making that happen. Under his leadership, the city has invested heavily in affordable housing. The Berkeley Landing Project will feature 110 affordable units, and they're almost ready for people to move into. The Villa Lawns Townhouse Project will feature a total of 12 units, and I see my time is almost up. I want to say that it, there is no reason that the city should be looking to replace Jonathan Evans, and I certainly hope that this council does not plan to do so. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. J.B. Dixon, Anna Vergne, Rochelle Baker-Hughes. J.B. Dixon from Singer Island and Riviera Beach. I ditto everything that the former councilwoman said. And I think that the entire topic of this being an emergency meeting is ludicrous. It's an emergency meeting to ask for an interim report report on the city manager. The city manager who was just shown the trust of the citizens with $115 billion worth of bonds. The fact that we have all of the projects that we have in the alley now. When I first came here, when I first became active, <laughs> in the city at all was because a former council had fired Jennifer Evans. 
we all got together. We wanted to bring him back. We did bring him back. And all of these things that had been festering forever, the water, all of the other things, were addressed by him. Now, you, you may want to know, and I think we all know, what is the elephant in the room? Who do you think on this dais wants to have their own city manager, a weak city manager, who will do what they want him to do? And I think you all know who those people are. And I think you need to watch very, very carefully what is going to happen to the $600 million, speaking of RFPs, <laughs> what's going to happen to the $600 million that we have to award to contractors? And you, you better watch very, very carefully. The city of Riviera Beach is incredibly lucky to have Jonathan Evans. You don't honestly believe that there aren't headhunters calling him every day. A young, black, educated, well-dressed, well-spoken person who has brought in six years things to this city that no one else has brought for decades and decades. So if the plan is, and I believe it is, to either fire him or harass him into accepting one of those offers, we are going to be watching. And there was a council that fired him once before, and we got rid of those people. And we can do it again. Thank you for coming. Anna Verdney, Rochelle Baker Hughes, and Erica Davis. My name is Anna Verney. <laughs> I know Ms. Lanier likes me to be cold, but it's really hard after all of that, okay? The Jonathan Evans is a politician. He's not an administrator. Let's keep it real, okay? <coughs> and when the council, the council decides what his role is and what he does, and when he doesn't do it, he goes, right? Now, when I looked at the evaluations for Mr. Evans, and I agree that they really need to be looked at, and they really need to be assessed in, as to the content of those evaluations, and I'll tell you why. Okay, as much as I appreciate Mr. Evans, and I do have a relationship with him, um, he, we have to look at our finances, right? And I've been looking at them closely, and there's something really wrong with them. I've, to a point where I've actually asked and spoken to my councilwoman regarding a forensic audit, okay? Um, when, we looked, when we look at Mr. Evans, we need to look at every department. Is procurement in place and the processes are working? No, they're not. Is there accountability in the city? I have been harping at accountability for the past three years. I've not been able to see that. The staff morale, let's look at that, right? We're having issues there. People are leaving. Okay, there's been claims of hostile work environment. We need to look at this stuff. Okay, we talk about um, unethical issues, not only during staff, but the head of administration. That's a problem. We're having human resource shortages. That's an administrative issue. We're not here to threaten the board as so much my, of my colleagues and co-residents said, it is for you guys to decide what his evaluation is. And I think looking at it at this point is really important. And I am not saying get rid of him. What I am saying, take a good look. The departments are in an uproar. The residents are in an uproar because we keep coming up here and asking you guys to take a look. So we're asking, take a look. It's money. Right, if we're paying $45 for a poinsettia or $3,000 for a barbecue for hamburgers, we're going to now turn over $150 billion? I'm sorry, but no. No, we're not doing that. Because we're going to, I will check each and every receipt and I will live in this city. I will sit right next to Jonathan Evans' office because right now I have requested um, receipts and I've not gotten them. 
The truth is, what Mr. McCoy says, and he continues to repeat, is true. You ask for information, you don't get it. Thank you, Anna. Rochelle Baker Hughes and Erica Davis. Good evening, I'm Rochelle Baker Hughes. I live in Riviera Beach. Um, when I put my name in to speak, I wasn't really sure what I was gonna be speaking on because um, the only reason I knew about this meeting was I went to the website and I saw on the calendar two special city council meetings, clicked on it and the agenda wasn't even on the city website as of three o'clock this afternoon. But I will say, first of all, congratulations, Ms. Miller Anderson and Mr. Spiritus. And I would like to, to just say this to the board. We need to move forward with the city. I kind of get a feeling as I'm sitting out here, there's, there's just a lot of tension in the air. And so I would hope and wish that as our council people going forward for this 2024, 2025 year, that we can move forward positively and get things done, get things moving. Yes, we need water. We need a new water plant. That should be the top priority. Um, the new fire station, please, yes. But water is, should be our most important thing. And I would hope that all of you would want that for your citizens. Um, me personally, I've never had an issue with Mr. Evans. He is um, one who, he does respond back to me. If I send him an email, um, it may not be in 30 minutes, but it's usually within a 24 hour period. Um, I see positive things that have been going on in the city since he's been city manager and I've lived here for 22 years. Um, so I just ask, since I really can't talk about 12B, that we all just try to work together and move this city forward. Because as I sat back there and I watched this, I said, you know, I have these napkins on my desk at work. It says, welcome to the shit show. And I don't want this city to become a shit show. I have friends who are in politics on other cities and I'm sitting there going, wow, this is bizarre. So let's make this the actual city where we want to live, work and play. And let's all work together and make some great changes and move forward and move ahead. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Erica Davis, Riviera Beach. Let's get real here. Let's, let's, let's just lay all the facts and the truth on the table right now. I know I only have less than three minutes now. Mr. McCoy, stop the shit show. Because you are always the one on Channel 12, Channel 5, and the Palm Beach Post. I mean, you sit up here talking out of both sides of your mouth. Everybody justifies, oh, this, you know how tragic it is, and he, you know how he is. You should be the one being evaluated and fired by now with your behavior. You just poked your colleague in the eye. You harassed and threatened your colleagues. You went over to my father-in-law's building doing donuts in the driveway. That kind of behavior, and you're not being accountable for your behavior, but you can put on blinders and say, you, 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 and always point fingers. No, that's not going to happen. We're going to evaluate you and get you out of here because we're sick and tired of this. Second of all, you do not represent District 1 because you don't do a damn thing for District 1. You don't even have a town hall meeting. You don't let us know anything about District 1. All you do is get up here, look at your little papers all day long, and then turn around and you want to, you, 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 I didn't get this, and you shouldn't be up in the administrative office anyway. That's against the rules. And y'all need to hurry up and get those policies back because you're interfering with the day-to-day -day operations of the city manager and his staff. And he's not going anywhere. That's a fact. Because we will get your ass out of here just like we did Tragic McCoy and the rest of them. That's a fact. And I hope you're coming in here, Mr. Spiritus, with a good heart and no intentions.
because we love Mr. Evans. We just going to let you know that right now. He's not going anywhere. He's moving this city forward because none of the rest of those sorry asses didn't do anything. 30 years we've had bad water. All the infrastructure has been bad with everyone I'm sitting up here because of corruption and bull crap. We had New Jack City in 2016 up in here. So don't sit up here talking about this, this, and that, McCoy. Cut your bull crap out trying to be slick. You, you only have a handful of little fans that come in here talking stupid. But we are sick Bless and tired. You. And we need the city to keep moving. At every election time, you come in here with the same thing. Evaluation of Mr. Evans. Bullshit. Thank you for your comment. Mr. Chair, that is the end of public comment for item 12B. Okay, we'll move on to interim evaluation of city attorney performance and employment contract. Mr. Chair. Mr. Lawson, before comment. we move on, um, I did have a question. Are, so for 12B, uh, what, what, what is the intent? Are we looking to get a evaluations presented? Uh, are we going to have those brought to the board before us? So uh, I, I just want to understand what was the um, urgency for this? What is our next step as a board? Well, right now, uh, council members did not receive copies of the evaluations. I believe we're all, all going to receive copies of the evaluations now. Uh, the city manager is going to give us his report in May. Is that correct? And uh, then we'll be able to move forward from that point on. So I guess that's my concern. Um, we're going to go on to the next item, and we're here for a special meeting as an emergency. And the outcome is we're going to get evaluations from Mr. Evans. Right. The, the emergency was the March 27th deadline on the previous item, so we added this on so we can just get some answers and move I, forward. I don't want to just add on items to the agenda just because we're meeting. We have an emergency special meeting because right. we had an item for the 27th. But Mr. Evans' evaluation and the city attorney's evaluation, when we don't have copies or they haven't been received, we should have stuck with what the emergency was versus just adding stuff on, which does not dictate an emergency. I, I don't believe that we should be here on a Friday night and ask all of our residents to come here for an emergency for Mr. Evans and Dawn's contract because some of my colleagues haven't seen the evaluations. Um, as Mr. Evans said, it is on record. So if it was something outstanding, this could have been added to a regular meeting versus rushing tonight to be here. Okay, well, we are having some staff issues and I think that that's very important that we clear that up immediately and not put that off to the next meeting. Council members are entitled to see information. Uh, the city manager wasn't even aware that HR did not have the evaluations uh, even though they were sent there. So I think we have to clean these things up immediately. We can't wait on this. It's very, very important that it, uh, for us to be able to function as a city, we have to be able to get information to the city council in a timely fashion and right away. And that is agreement, uh, Mr. Chair. And um, pardon me, I think that the concern I have is this is not an emergency. And the urgency of this is that this could have been on the regular council meeting with the business of the city. So, yes, it's very important that we get this done. But it was not to bring all of these residents out with the misleading insight of Mr. Evans' possible employment or the concerns of a contract with such vague, detailed discussion. I think we need to be clear and transparent and move the city forward professionally. And, and we don't have to have round of applause because, unfortunately, all my colleagues and all of the residents are out here tonight to discuss a very vague detail. I, I think that moving forward, uh, Mr. Chair, that we need to really understand and take into consideration and respect the needs of the, our residents and our colleagues. Um, just adding this on, I don't think was necessary. Okay. As you know, Mr. Wilson, this could have gone a different direction, but by being here and speaking the way we did tonight uh, as a uh, council and speaking with our city manager, I think we cleared up a lot of problems and it was very important that we do that now rather than later. But thank you for your uh, input and your comment and your opinion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. McCoy. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Councilman Lawson, um, your point is well taken. I just want to clarify, um, I, I called a special meeting. There was no intent that this was of emergency nature, but certainly I did want to address the issue because as I mentioned earlier, I subscribe. And I'm going to be quite honest. I'm not exactly sure that I'm convinced anymore about administration's failure on nine separate solicitations. 
So as far as I'm concerned, not having an evaluation on file is something that I think is very important, considering I've shared with you that I've been outstanding on an issue that forced me to seek the only recourse and only remedy in circuit court for an item that has been over two years old. And then when I was faced, Mr. 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 Lawson, with a hearing that was scheduled for earlier this month, in speaking to the city's legal, they decided that we should, well, we jointly agreed that we should postpone it and work on a stipulation. But I can't in good faith work on a stipulation for a violation of the law that occurred <laughs> two years ago when this happened four more times just since then. And especially when I have a contractor who's here in good faith, who submitted and followed the rules and we're gonna be punitive and punish him and kick him out and then say we're gonna start the process over when the very recourse that I'm seeking in circuit court is the same thing that he's allowed for under our code. So I certainly would agree that perhaps we could have done this at a regular meeting, but I was not gonna sit here and not and, and allow somebody to be discriminated and, and again prejudiced by some error of staff without it being addressed. So I apologize if this has interrupted your Friday night of the uh, March Madness bracket, but certainly I think this is important. And I shouldn't have to wait two years to get a document back. I shouldn't have to wait a whole month to just get a response back as to why a solicitation has so many issues. And then it wasn't addressed at the staff level. So please accept my, uh, my understanding of your concern. I don't know that um, it is really necessary to go much into it, but I would expect in the same fashion that we're gonna receive an evaluation from the city manager that we see receive the same from the city attorney because it does no good in evaluating an administrator if there's no feedback or the board doesn't even receive the information. So that's my um, comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Uh, council, with reference to the evaluation of the city attorney's performance and employment, can we follow the same process that we did for the city manager? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Lanier. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. McCoy? Yes, sir. Pro Tem Miller Anderson? Yes. Okay, and myself, yes. So, Mr. Manager, uh, you're going to work with the city attorney and get us the evaluation forms from the city attorney, and we'll discuss this at a later date after we have time to review the evaluations. Yes, Mr. Chair, and, and I believe uh, similar to my employment agreement, the attorney does have a, a prescribed window as to when her evaluations are, but we can provide any evaluations that were provided to the city attorney uh, from any members of the board. Thank you, Ms. Wynn, you're listening to this? No, oh, she's not. Council Davis, will you yes, please? Yes, I am. Oh, okay, thank you, Ms. Wynn. Yes, you're my evaluation window is a little different from Mr. Evans based on our start date. Um, I was recently evaluated in December, I believe. So we can furnish you those that we have. I can tell you that I was not evaluated by the full board, but I will furnish the ones that we that did submit them. Okay, thank you so much, Council uh, Wynn. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Thank Chair? You. Yes, Ms. Um, will you be receiving public comments for item 12C? Yes, we'll... You didn't receive any comments? I did. I do have public comment cards for oh, item okay. 12C. Okay, thank you. Move on. We want to receive that? Yes, we'll listen to the public comments. Thank you. Okay, item 12C, interim evaluation of city attorney performance and employment contract. Public comments will begin with Lady Goldwire. She has waived her comment. Cindy March, I believe, has left. Cheryl Edwards, she has waived her comment. Anna Vergne. Um, I know Dawn, not personally, and I definitely don't have the relationship with her that I have with Mr. Evans, but the, the one thing I did want to point out is, you know, while this procurement process does take place, I would imagine that every contract and every process has to go through her office, correct? Be because if it does go through her office, this shouldn't be happening, right? The other last year, I'm going to ask this council, please to not let this happen again. What happened was they looked at Mr. Evans' evaluation and they looked at Ms. Wentz, and that is how they put together the contract for Mr. Evans. 
There are two different disciplines doing different jobs. Please don't allow that to happen again. Please. Thank you for your comment, Anna. Mr. Chair, we also have, I don't know if you wanted to take them at this time, but we have comment cards for general public comment. Yes, let's move on, it's getting late. If you could uh, read the statement for a general, well, you read it already. So we'll move into general public comment, starting with John Miller, followed by Leon Granowitz. Okay. Lady Goldwire. John Miller, I'm a nobody, but I'm here just to say a few things. First of all, Mr. Spiritus, congratulations that you got in um, by a disqualification, but you're there. So work for us on Sing Around and remember what we want, what we fought for, and in other words, with the underwater project and all that. Remember that. That's first. Second of all, you know, Trudrick, you know, you do a good job. Actually, Marie, Marie Davis does. You get her to get all this paperwork for you, and then you take it and run with it. You do good. But you beat a dead horse. When you started out, 15 minutes, you said you had you went on and on and on. And you repeated yourself about four times. You do this at all the meetings. Um, how many times do you say follow up, follow up, follow up? You control the whole meeting. I mean, almost every meeting, as far as, as far as Mr. Evans goes, he's first class, period. Is he perfect? No. Nobody is here, including myself. At times, I'm an asshole. But I'm telling you right now, he's a good man, period. And we want to keep a good man in there. And we don't want a yes man. And we want somebody to hold the store, watch the store closely. And that's what we need. We didn't have that the other times. And Trotrick, when he originally was getting hired, me and you had a long conversation. And you had an animus towards him about his compensation. You went on and on being you talked on the phone. Do you remember that? And I told you, I told you this, Trotrick, he goes, well, I'm only making this amount of money. I told you, go back to school, Trotrick. Maybe you can, be, you can become a city manager. I have no college. And I worked hard all my life through the construction industry, and I did very well for myself. From just, some, just a tradesperson to become a, a uh, project manager on a huge job, many huge jobs. So I know what I'm talking about. I've been around a lot of different people. And stop attacking everybody. And we can't have any kind of episode like that again, Todrick. You got away with it again. Or the different things that you do with other people. They, what they say, 18, 19 complaints? You don't have any right to do that. I don't have any right to, to talk you down. I'm trying to say, learn from your mistakes and move on. Come up with good points. Don't beat it down to a horse. But here's the thing. Like you said, all right, you're right on a lot of things, Trodrick. But you weren't right tonight. You know why? Because they had no time to look at any of this stuff. Just like you say so many times. I had no time to look at this. What time did they have? 12 hours? Two hours? Three hours? No hours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Next is Lady Goldwire, Julie Botel, and J.B. Dixon. Lady Goldwire, originally my comments were going to be something different, but I will say this. First and foremost, I, I do have a mind of my own. I believe that I get a, uh, to evaluate circumstances from different perspectives, and it gives me a different level of insight. With that having been said, I'm not, um, it's not lost on me what my experience has been with Riviera Beach. And are there some disappointments? Yes, there are. But overall, I'm born, raised, bred here. And I'm always trying to find a way to lead with the fact that I don't think that I want to be associated with any other place other than Riviera Beach because I remember what it was to come here as a little girl. My father did 28 years here. I grew up in public works and the utility district. I remember what it was to um, 
have the annual picnics and to uh, know how proud our parents were to work for the city of Riviera Beach. You either worked, your parents worked for the city of Riviera Beach, Northern Telecom, so, uh, Solatron, the bakery, the phone company. These were prestigious jobs to have in this community and to be tied to that, to come from that, to be able to raise my children as a result of the things that have been instilled in me. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. So I can extend pleasant trees where pleasant trees are due. Um, and not feel two ways about it. I will say this in contrast to that. I am so baffled again at how short and selective our memories are. I hear the comments as they're directed at Trodrick about his, his temperament and how he moves about, but I don't remember it being any different when it was going on. You know, you hear people talk about the city being labeled a city of turmoil. That's because that's what you guys presented. The media that was here made it a point to speak to people being unqualified, sending people to jail unlawfully, making whole lies up on people and destroying lives. And y'all rolled that out to the bus out. And if you had the wherewithal to stand out and stand up for yourself, you were the problem until it was disproved otherwise. And then it was like, okay, she might be all right. He might be all right. Y'all up there now, you know what I mean? You've been elected. I looked at and I've experienced a lot of coming together in unity from the aspect of just running campaigns and, and, and dealing. And as much as things could have been adversarial, just to be able to interact and be on an opposing side and not have the conflict we expected, I think this is a good place to be. Thank you, ladies. Okay, Ms. Botel passes. J.B. Dixon, she has passed. Dolores Williams, Doretta Polk, Erica Davis. Dolores Williams. the councils and everybody and citizen and especially 20-some back there, boy, they got it going on. But I just want to say, Mr. Uh, McCoy, I appreciate you. Everybody be up there and they talking about you this and need to be fired. Erica, I hope you don't get mad with me. You bust the lady in the head. I didn't bust anybody in the head. You bust the, you went to court. Hey, please address you your comments to the council and please no comments from the uh, So you should audience. be up there talking about put people out this building. Don't be putting people out. Don't say put people out and be fired and what you did at this, at this meeting. Well, you just keep on standing up for what you believe, Mr. McCoy. You pull out everything and they come up and bring stuff on the agenda and they say, oh no, you pull it out and then they say, oh yeah, finally, then you all get a five vote. Uh, some of you might descend from it. But I want you to know you say that should have made more time for you to know this stuff. If you was meeting as a council and trying to see what's going on in the city, you would know how to help each other before y'all come up here at this board and cause more havoc in the city. That's the problem. Y'all don't want to meet one another. You, it seem like y'all got a, a vendetta, had a big thing you call a special thing, Miss Lanier. It almost tore up the whole city talking about something. Same thing you did. Y'all did it twice, special meetings. Y'all call these special meetings and half of y'all be knowing what y'all be saying up there know what's coming up on this board either. And I'm still going to bring about the water. If any of y'all want to test the water, get your clear white bucket and put the water in there. You'll see it come out yellow. Drop your cup of bleach of things of bleaching and see how clear it come up. There's still the problem. I don't have anything against Mr. Evan. But if they go back to history, as some say, and you'll see how he got back here, 
when one lady said, y'all did a petition to make it get back because he got fired by the special group. But all of you that came up there was with that petition to bring Mr. Evan back. You were so in love with him, some of y'all were boo-hoo crying that that council fired him. You hear me? But y'all need to stop this here. Talking about, let's go forward. Y'all trying to take this thing backwards. Y'all don't care. You got to care about the people. You got to care what you want to do for the people. You, everybody, y'all talking about Mr. McCoy. You don't want to give him no, no props, but you get up and criticize him. Criticize yourself. First, get the mirror and look at yourself. Yeah, you need to look in the mirror. That's Thank the you, Ms. Mirror Williams. Davis. Please Ms. address Davis. your comments. Ms. Davis. Ms. Davis. Ms. Polk is before oh, you. Oh, sorry, Ms. Polk. I'm ready to roll. Doretta Polk, Erica Davis, and Mary Brown. Good evening. My name is Doretta Park, and I'm a resident of Riviera Beach. And I just want to congratulate uh, Chair Pro Tem, uh, Ms. Anderson uh, Miller, and also Mr. Uh, Spirits. Um, one thing I want to talk about is that uh, Mr. McCoy, if someone had uh, wanted to have a special meeting at 4.30, and they hadn't even received the backup, not even a half an hour before the meeting, you would be up in arms screaming to the top of your lungs. You have to be fair. I've talked to you many a times about fairness, and especially kindness. You have to be. Let's, uh, let's keep this city running properly as it should be. As far as uh, anybody thinking of trying to terminate Mr. Evans or Mrs. Wynn, think again. It's wrong. It is totally wrong. <coughs> and for you, Mr. Spiritus, I don't know how you made chairperson. I really don't how know how that happened because I was home and then uh, at uh, trying to listen to uh, the YouTube, they went out and everything, but anyway, it came back on. But you have yet, yet to apologize to me. Three years ago, when you told me, and I did not provoke you at all, at all, and I asked the question, Mr. Spiritus, if you are elected to council, what would you do for the people of Riviera Beach? Sitting, standing up this podium, and you were right, right in one of those seats right there. And you told me, Mrs. Spiritus, to be quiet and shut up. Now, I hope now that you, you are elected by default. You come with a better, better attitude, integrity, and with kindness. Because this is what we need. You'll be on the board three years, and we need to move this city forward. Mr. Evans had done a remarkable, remarkable changes in the city. Decades and decades. I've lived here all my life. Nothing has been done. The water situation has been like that even when I'm growing up. As a child, growing up. He is promoting the best for us. So please, if anybody thinks of trying to get rid of Mr. Evans or the city attorney, Think again, because it's wrong. It's totally wrong. And I thank you very thank you, much. Erica Davis. Erica Davis, Riviera Beach. I don't give a cuss what anybody says about me. And your information, Ms. Williams, is very false because my case was dismissed. Thank you very much, because it was a lie. Now, second of all, moving forward, the problem with this city is people like them. People like them, because you know what? All this ignorance, not knowing, not coming in here, trying to learn things, always listening to all these uh, demon spirits on the streets, instead of coming in here learning something, instead of coming in the bond meeting, instead of coming in the workshops to learn about the government in order for you to understand how it works. And you're pointing fingers at a man that don't do anything but do his job as far as moving the city forward. Ever since this man has been in here, 
You always had this demon agenda to get rid of them because you're jealous. You don't want you, your <coughs> egos are so inflated to the pro, to the point that you hate the man. What is it? Tell us what it is. Because you're a smart young man, but you use it in the wrong way. And that's what angers me about you. You are very intelligent. You are on the positive side of this situation here. You are in the council seat where everything is moving, but you all are being so damn demonized in your mind and want to hurt people. And this is what pisses me off. It is so stupid. If you're intelligent, act intelligent. I chose you first to run. I came to you and asked you if you wanted to run because I thought you had that potential. And you just turned it into a negative. Why? You, you are on the right side of this right now where everything's moving, where nobody else on the board moved anything. What is your problem? What is all of y'all problem? That's why the city don't do it, go anywhere. This is one city that everybody laughs at because we have ignorant people in it that lives in it. What is the problem? It's always the problem. You got the water moving. You have all the, all the building, government buildings that are moving forward. What is the problem, Trojic? What's the problem? You're smart, but use it the right way. All of you all. Because it is an election coming up. Y'all are the ones that's making the, the difference here. All you have to do is work with this man and move it forward and stop having your own personal agendas. Damn, what's so hard about that? Thank you. Mary Brown. Graham Rivera Beach. I think that we have heard enough tonight, and I am quite sure that we are not proceeding where we are going. At. Information can be misrepresented. I'm going to make a comment. Ms. Marge said something that was very fluent. Mr. Evans has done, he has done a tremendous job. And I am, I know you didn't say that. That's Ms. Bram. Please said. refer your comments to the council. And what she said was with his evaluation, he's just one person that is governed by all of you all. He has his staff that he has to control. He has, in other words, I'm saying this. She didn't say, it, but she said he's responsible for that underneath layer that, that he has. The problem is not so much with him because he does have that expertise. He has proven that. <laughs> Ms. Bram never sees the glass half full. She sees it full. It was also made mention about Mr. McCoy's attitude. Attitudes comes in various formats, various faces. Ms. Lanier too. She can be very boastful herself too. Very boastful herself, too. So if we all need to check ourselves, we all need to check ourselves. Because she can become very hostile herself, too. And I know that for a fact, and others know this as well. So when we talk about attitude, let us all get in check with those attitudes. Because Ms. Bram know how to lock you down. I think those newscasters and everybody know. Ms. Brown was in here when this man here was here. When we was getting him back in here, myself and others, see, you all don't really know what you got in this city here. But we are on the move to move things. And these meetings here tonight, these really could have been held on November the 3rd or April the 3rd or whatever. But since we are here tonight, we have to address these things here tonight. Ms. Miller Anderson, yes, yeah, she's calm. She's calm. She is calm. I don't come, I don't come because you, you, you don't like me. I don't stand on somebody liking me neither. I did not accomplish in my life 
what I have accomplished because people's liking me and disliking me. We can be, we can have an agreement, but I'm not one that play in your sandbox. And Mr. Evans, as the city manager you, too, this chance is his new beginning. Thank you. So let's move it, Mr. Evans. Thank you. Now, if you have something to say, start that. We have one final comment, uh, public comment from Madeline Mills. Good evening, board. Um, I have, it's been a long time since I've been up here. So, but the reason why I'm here is because of this dire emergency meeting that was called. And of course, I'm looking at an interim evaluation. I've never heard of an interim evaluation, but I wanna say if there was an evaluation, the evaluation from Mr. Evans should be superior. As moving into this city, which I am a resident, I never saw the move in the progressive movement that I've seen with him. That's why I admire him. And the thing about it is when you are educated, you are hated because you don't succumb to the pressures that people who are uneducated and want to feel that their ego needs to be stroked to get that accolade or that validation. But I also want to address Mr. McCoy because he feels that uh, peanut galleries make noise, right? However, he's mentioned some terms talking about disenfranchisement and following rules and losing confidence and disregard uh, him. Well, he disregards the residents as he fought his colleague, causing us to be an eye and a sore eye in the community, but people hail him. He also breaks the rules by interacting with the city uh, city staff, which that's a clear violation of the charter saying hands off city employees. But I guess it doesn't apply to you. So we should still have confidence. Uh, far as anyone could have gotten your evaluation, Mr. Evans, you're absolutely right. You're the council people. Only thing you gotta do is send an email. They give it to you, but yet he aggrandizes the situation and blows it out of proportion because he wants to focus on him. It's no uh, wonder that I see different people that he supports here in the audience because that's the thing that they're going to bottom feed and, and decide to steal from the city because why? That's what they've been accustomed to. Mr. Evans comes and he stops it. He makes you act professionally, and that's what... He does. But unfortunately, Mr. McCoy, you don't have that. So as I wrap up my 35 seconds, Mr. Evans, thank you for coming to this city. Thank you for restoring dignity to our city. Thank you for moving our city forward. Thank you. Mr. McCoy, I can't say that for you. Thank you for your comment. Mr. Chair, that is the end of public comment. Okay. Uh, any comments from the uh, council? Uh, Chair? Yes. I just wanted to say that, um, of course, I support uh, Mr. Jonathan Evans, but I also support our city attorney. Uh, she works very hard for the city. Uh, she makes sure that we are on the right track in terms of what is legal. She has to defend this city, and she has to support this city, and she's done a very good job of it. Uh, the same as Mr. McCoy. Um, I, was, I was about to say Mr. McCoy. <laughs> Mr. McCoy, speaking of Mr. McCoy, uh, you know, he is intelligent, but when you have the type of attitude that um, no one can tell you anything, and I know sometimes I may get a little aggressive, but I have not jumped on my colleague. I have not harassed 18 people. I have not done donuts in parking lots of small black businesses. I have not done any of that. And this job is a difficult job. I signed up for this. I signed up for if you have a special meeting at midnight on a Sunday, I have to be here. That is my job. So my position is that we are moving this city forward. We have all types of infrastructure all types of businesses we bring into the city, projects that we've never had in the history of this city. 
$200 million water plants, $55 million in recreational facilities, much money for the police department, two other fire stations, another city hall. We are moving forward. And what is happening is that I think people don't like that. I don't think people are accustomed to seeing this city moving forward. I don't think they're accustomed to seeing us doing well. And they want to bring that kind of uh, uh, dis, just disinformation, lies, let's call it what it is, lies, about Mr. Evans, about me, about my colleagues. So of course this is a thankless job. Of course this is what we signed up for. But what we want to do is that we want to show the public, we want to show this county that Riviera Beach is the best place to live, work, and play. Mr. Chair, from the city council. Mr. Chair, where yes, are we on the time. agenda? Um, I should have gone to the manager first. Yeah. I realized that, but I just figured we go hit the city council and then go to the manager. I would prefer we go ahead with the manager, then we, I mean, that's up to okay. the others, but they follow the agenda. Okay, Mr. Manager, Mr. Evans. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I, I have no comments this evening. Okay, city attorney. Davis no or, comments, Mr. Chair. No, thank you, Ms. Wynn. Any other comments from the city council? I, I would like to make a statement to Ms. Polk. Uh, clearly, uh, I think it was a misunderstanding from the two of us in the past, and hopefully we can move forward and be friends and work together to, to make this the best place to live. <laughs> Is there? Yes, I have comments, Mr. Chair. Yes. You were doing Ms. the rest Pro, of the comments? Ms. Pro Tem, yes. Um, I just wanted to, I know some of us have already hinted on the, the progress that's being made in the city, but if Mr. Evans is able to, off the top of his head, just give us a little information in terms of what have this council been able to accomplish in terms of our facilities. Um, such as our fire station on Congress? Like how much funds have we put into the facilities that have been crumbling that were not addressed for decades? Um, so for example, our fire station on Congress, what, 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 what type of money did we put into that? So Mr. Chair, if I may, with, with respect to the, the two fire stations that the city, one currently occupies fire station 88, that's on Congress and um, Blue Heron, uh, that station with the property acquisition is roughly about $20 million. And then the station that is being constructed right now on the City Hall campus is roughly about $18 million. So uh, you've got you know close to, to $40 million concerning um, your fire infrastructure. Also, you've um, acquired a building and, and repurposed the building for the purposes of a municipal library. Um, and you've put since 2019, I think $55 million in totality into water infrastructure. And then um, some of your investments have induced uh, economic redevelopment in the Broadway corridor with Berkeley Landing, that $640,000 uh, grant that the city provided helped facilitate uh, the largest capital investment in the CRA um, uh, probably since, since its inception. And then uh, most notably, um, the, the bonds passing $115 million of municipal facilities, new fire station, new police station, and $55 million in recreational facilities. So this board has been at the forefront of making the largest capital investment in this since the inception of this city. Um, and that's just the, the items off the top of my head. We can get into more specificities, the, the project with, with Found Care, um, that particular project in the Broadway corridors, a $15 million construction project, which the business incubator spaces are valued about $2.8 million, and those will be operated within the, the CRA. The two 99-year ground leases that you signed with related uh, for the activation of Marina Village, um, there, there's uh, over a billion dollars worth of infrastructure that or development activity that will be on the Broadway corridor and then the public solicitation that's set to be released on the City Hall campus that looks to activate maybe $600 million worth of investment in the community. So it's been the work of this board and staff 
to help, you know, usher in that. And it's been a little over, I think, four years, eight months for who's counting. Right. And, and that's what I think everyone needs to realize. Um, and I, I want to make sure that <laughs> this board and, you know, this Dr. Spirit, as you just got on the board, but I cannot leave out Dr. Botel. She was a part of this group that committed. I mean, we had numerous workshops, numerous meetings to make sure that we could invest in the infrastructure in our city. It was not long ago when I was on the council back in 2015, 16, I think it's 15, 16, somewhere around in there, where there was a council who was receiving a $1,000 stipend monthly to attend a one hour meeting per month. I declined to take it because, and that was your water utility district board. And you wonder why we are having issues now. That money was being spent. Part of the money was going to the council for what? We met maybe 30 minutes a month when clearly we should have been meeting many, many days and times and hours to address the issues because they didn't happen overnight. But I just want to make sure that I put on record that w this council, they did what many wouldn't do because it's not easy putting in, putting in investing money into buildings such as your fire station or your roads because it's not pretty, it's not a building, it's not a business you're cutting ribbons for. So some people seem to feel like they don't see that, they don't see the value in that, but it really is important. And so Mr. Evans was very instrumental in making sure that happened and leading his staff in making sure that what we wanted to happen, happened. So I, I, I want to make sure that we clearly understand that a lot of work has been put into making sure that the city moves forward. And I just can't understand why we, we all are happy and cutting ribbons and saying our speeches when we're doing great things that people recognize, but we have to recognize how we got there. And so I just wanted to be able to put that on record to say that we need to continue to move forward. Of course, yes, people need to be held accountable, but we need to be, continue to move forward. Any other members of the council have any comments? Sure, I have one more comment. Yeah, I just want to, I, I, I talked about, I'm sorry, I talked about Mr. Evans and Ms. Wynn, but I'd be, be remiss if I didn't mention Ms. Deirdre Jacobs as the interim uh, deputy director or the interim city manager, one of those titles. But she has been instrumental in many of these departments in the city of Riviera Beach. She is a woman of integrity. She has no lies in her. She tells the truth and she makes sure that the staff understand that they're here to work. And I appreciate her persistence and her honesty in dealing with this council and the staff. Thank you, Ms. Jacobs. Thank you. Any other comments? Being none, is there a motion to adjourn? So to moved, adjourn? Ms. Lydia? So moved. Second? We're adjourned. Thank you so much for coming out. We're going to take a five minute break before we start the next meeting. Thank you.
please. Can everyone please be seated? We'd like to start the second meeting. Thank you. Please be seated. We'll start the second meeting. This is a special city council meeting. Uh, we are at the Marina Event Center, 190 East 13th Street, Riviera Beach, Florida, 33404. It's March 22nd, 2024. This is a continuation. The meeting was called for 530. It's currently 731. Means call to order. Can the uh, clerk please take roll call? Mayor Ronnie Felder. Chairperson Glenn Spiritus. Here. Chair Pro Tem Kashamba Miller Anderson. Present. Councilperson Tragic McCoy. Here. Councilperson Shirley Lanier. Here. Councilperson Douglas Lawson. Here. City Manager Jonathan Evans. Here. Acting City Clerk Deborah Hall McCullen is present. City Attorney Don Wynn. Here. Assistant City Attorney Keandra Davis. You may proceed, Mr. Chair. Are there any uh, additions, deletions, substitutions uh, from the manager, mayor, or the council? None from staff, Mr. Chair. Any from the council? Mr. Mayor? Any disclosures uh, from the mayor or council members? Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So move. Second. Call the vote, please. Councilperson Miller Anderson? Yes. I'm sorry, Chair Pro Tim Miller Anderson, my apologies. Yes. Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Councilperson Lanier? Yes. Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Sp Chair Spiritus? Yes. Unanimous vote. Mr. Chair, we are on item number 12, discussion and deliberation, which is item 12A, discussion and reconsideration of chairperson and chairperson pro tem for the city council and community redevelopment agency. Mr. Chair, we do have public comment cards for this item. The acceptance of public comment cards for this item is now closed. Please be, we'll do public comment first. Uh, please be reminded the city council board has adopted. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Chair. Yes, Mr. So McCoy. If I can offer a suggestion in special meetings, the call of the special meeting needs to be proffered to the board as to the purpose of it. So can we hear that first prior to us going into public comment? So if a member of the public chooses to make a comment, then they will have the right context in which to make their comments. So if we could, have the uh, okay. The purpose agenda. of the meeting is to uh, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I think it's pretty clear. But what I was suggesting was you allow the person that profit. Okay. Okay. I, okay. Mr. Lawson, would you like to make that? Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, just want to preface my comments on um that we um had a meeting on Wednesday and during that council meeting um, I did extend my support for Mr. Glenn Spears as chair and that was following multiple failed motions for the position. Understanding the importance of this role of chair and um, the need for residence transparency, I think within 24 hours we had a special meeting called. My colleague, um, two colleagues, Mr. Spiritus and Mr. McCoy addressed some matters that needed to be raised that they deemed as an emergency and for the instance no immediate need for an evaluation of mr evans contract when we just did an annual review in july similarity miss Wynn received an annual evaluation in december just a few months ago i do appreciate and understand and respect the need for the rfp solicitation that was an urgent matter but i think part of the confusion with for our residents was that there were items that were not deemed an emergency and there's no 
precise definition of a uh, reasonable Manity, time. Mr. Chair, I'm calling a but, point of inquiry. Are we germane to what we're being called here for this meeting for? Mr. Chair, would you like to rule on that? Still we're here to discuss, obviously, the uh, to reconsider the vote on the chairman of the uh, city council. So please keep your comments, Mr. Lawson, to that specific, which you uh, signed the resolution for. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right. And with the calling of this meeting, um, the swift decision to convene this meeting, it highlights some of Mr. Spiritus's lack of experience in handling critical city affairs. While he's a well-accomplished previous city manager, and has been involved in New York politics for over 30 years. I want to offer the grace required to familiarize yourself with the responsibilities of being a council member in Riviera Beach. In hindsight, I realize that I rushed to appoint a new board chair without considering Mr. Spears' inexperience on the board and may not have been the best course of action. I believe that he could benefit from a year of service, assuming the role of leadership as customary for most of these board members. And I would believe in the best interests of the city and our residents, the board, to allow Mr. Spiritus the opportunity to gain the experience, understanding the role of being appointed as the chair. Therefore, I'm going to be proposing tonight a motion to reconsider the appointment of chair and then ask for a reappointment of nominations. So that was the intent for the meeting and why I called the meeting. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lawson. First, we'll have public comment, but please. The first public com comment speaker is Anna Vergne. First, uh, first, Ms. Hall, I'd like to remind everyone the City Council and the Board has adopted rules of decorum governing the public comment during official meetings, which has been posted at the front desk. In an effort to preserve order, if any of the rules are not adhered to, the City Council chairperson may have any disruptive speaker or attendee removed from the podium from the meeting and or from the building if necessary. Please govern yourself accordingly. Thank you. Now, Ms. Hall. The first speaker is Anna Vergne, followed by Lady Goldwire and Erica Davis. Anna present. Okay, so we'll move on to Lady Goldwire. Lady Goldwire, I think I was able to present myself with some degree of poise, Doug, in the earlier meetings because I wanted to package and properly deliver my sentiments with regard to you specifically. Um, I'm hopeful that I'm going to get another opportunity at this because I ain't going to be able to get it all in this first set of three minutes. You always lead with a kiss. You always lead with a kiss. And that's the thing that woke me up out of my sleep a couple nights ago. I want to make sure that my son is gone because I always want to ensure that I put some degree of separation between what I am and what I raised him to be. And I think I've been able to do a pretty good job of that. You presented yourself to my son as a mentor, someone he could look up to for this campaign. You presented yourself as friend. You sat around the table with us, listened to strategy. <coughs> you did a lot of things that I felt like were disingenuous. We've been using this word a lot tonight. But because my son is his own man, and because I knew what the murmurs were in the street, electing him is like electing lady, and lady pushed him up to it. I just needed to fall back. And what I'm dealing with right now internally is the lack of protection that I provided him from you. What you did to him, you've done as a result to secure this chair position. I didn't want to inbox you. I didn't want to text you. I didn't want it to be any mints of words 
because I want you to be clear that you have a newfound enemy in me. I don't make it a point to dislike anybody. I try my best to push forward black men specifically. I hate when y'all have y'all freaking frat. I'll address the second part of what I got to say when we get to the other, but I will say this. You lead with a kiss, Judas. And if Mary had known what Judas had in store for her son, I believe Christianity would look a lot different today. I am angry. It was unnecessary. It was completely out of order. And I just want to go on record as saying, you have a newfound enemy in me. I'm going to walk through hell with gas draws for you. Thank you, lady. Mr. Chair, Mr. Walsh. Moving forward, with respect to Ms. Lady and her concerns, I truly let her speak her mind at all times. But let's keep it germane to the topic until public comment, Mr. Chair. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And next is Erica Davis, Margaret Shepherd, followed by Derek Barnes. Erica Davis, Riviera Beach. On that note, if we're speaking of the CRA, I'm going to say I've had problems with everybody up there. But when it comes to business, I leave the personal stuff out the door. Now, Doug Lawson did a phenomenal job as the chair. He moved this city, I mean, moved these meetings forward, and he did a great job. And I think that being that everybody else up here has had several chances to be chair, pro tem, or whatever, I think he needs to be chair again to move him forward because he's doing a great job. Now, anybody else want to be pro tem, that's fine, but Kashama's been here longer than anybody. She's a veteran, and she's been the chair several times. Shirley Lanier has been the chair. What, twice? You've been twice? Once? Well, I think that Doug does a professional job at being the chair, and I think that he should be the chair. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your comment. Margaret Shepard, Derek Burns, and Mary Brown. Margaret Shepard, Vivier Beach. As I said, I, I was tongue-tied. I mean, I couldn't really talk, and, and I, anybody know me, I'm not lost for words. I was really lost for words. The way you were back and forth, by, and you all been on that board way longer than Mr. Spiritus, and yet you get, didn't get it together. Let's see how this thing really goes. The vice chair normally is chair then you all pick your vice chair. It was convoluted, even if you didn't want Lanier. That is protocol, which you all never, never went by when they passed over you, Doug. Now, let's be clear. I don't care for charging with court, but let's be clear. When has he been chair? When has he been chair? Let's be fair about what we do and what we say. He should have been chair at one. No, I, I was glad when he left uh, planning and zoning because, you know, you know, whatever. But let's be fair. Mr. Spirit, this got the seat. Okay, now what? Now what? Something happened. Something happened in the water that you want to change, Doug. That's unfair. And I count you as my friend. But I believe in going by the books and you're not passing the book cor correctly. For whatever reason you want, try to good, okay. But there was Miss Lanier. Miss Lanier should have been moved up. That was the name of the game, but he's here. He's here. And you say, well, he didn't know anything. Well, goddamn, none of y'all knew anything when you got there. None of you knew anything. He's been, I, I had his card in my pocketbook. I, could have read it out, but he was the city manager. He was in, he was one of any of what you all were doing before you was even born. If you don't like him, just say, I don't like him. That's the way I feel. I'll let you know I don't like you. I don't even have to say I don't like you. My, my vibes are put out, I don't like you. That's very fair. 
He's here, and for some reason, you want to move him. You didn't know nothing when you got here. Nothing. And you want to not salivate him. Right is right. Dr. Botel came from the island. Don Pardo, I supported both of them. They come here and didn't know nothing. They didn't know nothing. So now you sit there, Doug, and say, give them a year. Who the hell are you? You're not God. And you're my friend. Step aside with grace. Step aside. This is it. Mr. Spirit, this, you have my support. Thank you, Bishop. Eric Burns. Good evening, City Council. I don't quite understand that when we brought Spiritus in and we all voted responsibly, how can you say that he's not capable to run the job? Well, you all weren't capable when you was given the job to run the chair from the start. Life is a learn experience. You live to learn. You learn to live. Uh, you even gave the guy a chance. I don't know how you just all of a sudden just come up with this idea to get rid of this guy because you say he's lack of experience. Well, you all were lack of experience before you was given the chair. So it doesn't make sense. I think we need to keep things in perspective. Uh, it's a lot of foolishness going on in the City River Beach, a lot of clowning, a lot of, you know, we, you know, we're the talk of the town and we just need to do things according to the way the books say it needs to be done. I don't know if, of such a law that you can vote you people that sitting there and voted someone in the chair and all of a sudden can rebuke it from a person. I, I don't know if that's even legit or not, uh, but I'm just, you know, I just want to, you know, just share with y'all that we need to do things accordingly right because I have dealt with quite a few people in the city of River Beach that done me very wrong. And uh, I just told them that God would take care of them and he took care of one of them. He walked every one of them out this door. So, you know, you, you, you can't play with fire. You got to treat people right because for whatever you do, you, you know, there, there is a reap with yourself. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Mary Brown. Ms. Mayor Bram Rivera Beach, uh, to the chair and all of the board members. I can remember when Mr. Evans uh, came into the city the first time. It was talk that we don't want this white man leading us. We don't want him leading us. He's white. And the, and the majority of the city is black. Ms. Bram went around with all of his family pictures, and they was blacker than this thing here. It does not matter because the color of our skins is who we are. Mr. Lawson has been a good chair. I like that temperament. I, 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 just, like, I just like moving things along and how to move things along. It is nothing in the charter. It is nothing in Robert's Rules of Order, and it is no governmental procedures that says that a vice chair moves up, nor a chair moves up. That is the pleasure that is given amongst the board. If you say that Mr. Spiritus and Mr. Spiritus, I'm gonna use this, that he's a white man and he's just came on board, or he's Caucasian and just came on board, Ms. Bram has been in the city here, Bucket McCann and all of the others. They came along. And they were, they weren't Ms. Bram's color, but Ms. Bram got along with them. We are in a new era here. We have, we, we have so many projects that are in the pipeline and $150 million bonds. What does that tell you all? It just did not take the whites vote. It took the black man's vote as well, too. And when we talk about things that we talk about, Mr. McCoy, that's racism there, too. Miss Brown is going to call a spade a spade on you all tonight. 
He hasn't never received a chance neither. So what you all gonna say about Mr. McCoy? That you're saying about Mr. Spiritus? Nothing dictates that pleasure is given amongst the board there. And that's what you all should come to realize. And, and, and where we're going at now, it takes a precise someone with that fortitude and with that get up ability to move these projects along and help that city manager and not sit down and be lazy about it because we are going to be watching you. We are going to be watching you. So that pleasure there still lies with you, boy. But there's nothing that takes that. That's in between you. So it doesn't matter with Miss Brown whether you white, black, blue, or purple. Thank you, Move us alone. Thank you for your Thank comment. Thank you. Mr. Chair, let's end the public comment for item 12A. Hey, if I might, uh, privilege of the chair, I did not call for the adoption of the agenda. I'm sure you will notice that uh, for a reason. I uh, I hear that council, I, I was given a gift the night that I was sworn in. The city clerk gave me a gift. Robert's Rules. Robert's Rules and the city charter govern and the state govern this council. The, uh, the request from Mr. Lawson and Ms. Lanier was to reconsider a vote for chairperson. Well, this is what I found in Robert's rules. Number one, 4646, time at which an election takes place. An election to an office becomes final immediately if the candidate is present and does not decline, or if he is absent and has not, contest, not consented to his candidacy, provided that he does not immediately decline. After the election has become final, as stated in this paragraph, it is too late to reconsider, section 39, the vote on the election. Number two, 37.9, number two, can be applied to the vote on any motion except an affirmative vote whose provisions have been partly carried out, and I've been acting chair, so I've been carrying it out. G. An election that has become final as provided in 4646. It appears that that request did not meet the requirements of Robert's rules. Now, yes, the chair does serve at the pleasure of the board, but that request was not done properly. So I did not adopt the agenda because I'm waiting for council to give us an opinion as to whether or not we should be moving forward. Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Wynn. Uh, I think you should have adopted the agenda anyway, because again, you know, you've been talking about it and the public has been allowed to speak as well. So that should definitely happen. Um, I think we need to hear, I need to hear how the motion is going to be presented before I can say whether or not you're correct. Well, there if there is going the, if there is going to be a motion for uh, the chair and pro tem, I need to hear how it's presented before I can let you know whether or not that provision of okay. Robert's rules is correct. Okay, but Miss Wynn, the motion was to reconsider the the request was to reconsider the vote. That was the request for the meeting, but there hasn't been a formal motion yet. Is I mean, if there's not going to be one, then there's no need for the discussion. But there's no motion on the floor. Okay, well let's let's sure. adopt the agenda and then get sure. to the motion, right? I think we're past adoption of the agenda. Okay, so we'll let. Okay, I think we. Uh, is there any other discussion from the city council on this item? Chair, sure. the clerk, did we not adopt the agenda? We did. We did. Okay, I, I don't think we adopted it by vote. Oh, okay, okay. Kashamba, you have any? Uh, any comments on this on this item? I, I, what are we are we listening to? What the attorney? Are we done with what the attorney well, the, was the suggesting? Attorney, yes, the attorney. Yes, the attorney made a recommendation. She wants to hear what the motion is. But before we go for a motion, we want to hear some comments before you make make a motion. 
No, I'm, no I'll, I'll let you know if I need to make a okay. comment. Okay, anyone else? Mr. Lawson, you have a uh, motion you'd like to make? Yeah, I want to make a motion to reconsider and place on the agenda for next meeting. Reconsider the chair and vice chair. Second. I'll second. Okay. Can the clerk call the vote, please? But prior to that, Mr. Chair. That's that's to uh, to do this at the next meeting. Is that what your uh... motion to reconsider the chair and have it placed on the agenda? to reopen nominations for next meeting. So I need a little uh, clarification as well. Is Mr. Lawson, is it your intention that, it, and is that all it is, that this, the selection of chair and vice chair be placed on the agenda at the next regular meeting to be reconsidered? To take nominations for reconsideration. Okay. Mr. Chair. Shamba, yes. Um, I mean, I have no problem with that, but I don't know that we needed to meet tonight if we weren't taking any action. I mean, the whole point would be, I mean, we could have just put that on a, an agenda. I don't understand why we're here to take, make a motion to put it on the agenda when it could have just been a request to put it on the agenda or as a discussion. Am I correct, Ms. Wynn? Yes, it could have been. I thought, though, that I heard Mr. Lawson say because one meeting was called and we would be here anyway, that's why he decided to, to do it, if I'm not incorrect. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it could have been said as a comment, then, if that's the case at the end. City Council comments? I, I have a comment. Uh, Ms. Wynn and, and Mr. Lawson. Clearly, the chair serves at the pleasure of the board. It wasn't presented properly for this, and you keep using the term reconsider. I, I think you would have suggest to revote rather than use the term reconsider, because then we keep going back to Robert's rules. So I think you should use the term to revote for a new chairman and, and pro temp rather than. So I, I suggest you amend your motion for that purpose. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Wilson. Attorney Wynn, the motion to reconsider versus the new vote. Uh, Mr. Chair is actually correct in regards to the new vote uh, if we reconsider um, versus it going around. So it would be the new vote. So if I can make amendment to that motion. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Second. As amended. I will, but I have a question. Yes, Ms. Pro Tem. What are we waiting? I mean, what are we waiting on? If we're here, why, why are we not doing this now? What are we waiting for next week to do the vote for if we're all here right now? And the thing is, it could have just been put on the agenda for next time if that was the case. Why right. are we not? What's, what's going to happen between now and then? Oh, it was advertised as reconsider. So, it doesn't matter. It's a discussion and deliberation. Well, because reconsideration, that term under Robert's rules, it has to be at your next regularly scheduled meeting and not at a special meeting. So why are we here again? Mr. Lawson, you want to answer that? But I, I could just say two council members requested we have the meeting uh, to the city clerk and the city clerk was required to hold the meeting. So we, we are here tonight because uh, there was a special meeting called prior to this, which was deemed an emergency. Um, and this item was originally to be added to the meeting, but a separate meeting was called for reconsideration. And that's where we are here to just make the determination if the board will entertain a vote to reconsider the chair, uh, which we did just change to new votes. And that's what it was noticed as. So being that it's gonna be a new vote, that is what we're moving forward with. Any other comments before roll? Roll call. So what are we doing? So are we, we are, we're, we're talking about reconsideration of, or revoting. A new vote, revoting. So we're doing that tonight or later? No, the next meeting. Okay. All you're doing tonight, if I can provide some clarity, is 
basically voting to place it on the agenda at the next regular meeting. Right. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Wilson. Attorney Wynn, if you could opine, um, is that vote something that can be taking place tonight, being that it was not noticed? No, I don't believe it should be. I think it should be at your next regularly scheduled meeting. So that's uh, for clarity. Be being that it was noticed as reconsideration, um, Attorney Wynn has recommended that it's not voted on tonight. Mr. McCoy? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you provide that reference again that you cited? Just the, just the numbers, please. 4646. Okay. Follow up. And, so, 30, and 37 9, number two. 37 9. Right. 42. Number two, it's C and G. So, Ms. Wynn, if I can have your attention on this. So, if this is barred by Robert's Rules of Order, that this is not eligible to be reconsidered it doesn't matter if we do it today or next week what exactly is the purpose because if the rules bar a reconsideration of the election of officers it doesn't matter if you do it now or in three months so am i not following along that's not correct mr mccoy um respectfully the rules we also have to, to read along with our charter, and the charter says that the chair serves at the pleasure of the board, so it can happen at any time. The issue that I believe Mr. Spirit has brought up with the rule is that you can't reconsider something at a special meeting. You have to do it at, regular, at a regularly scheduled meeting. So that's what the difference is. Right, but specifically the rule so at a regular, I'm sorry, at a regularly scheduled meeting, any regularly scheduled meeting, you all can take up the reconsideration or the re or just to change however that motion looks, the chair and, and or the chair pro tem, because they serve at the pleasure of the council. There's nothing that says that once you're in that seat that you get to stay there or in that position, that you get to stay in the position of chair or pro tem for a year. If something, if positions on the council change and someone wants to change the chair, they can they can bring a motion, and if it passes, then the gavel passes. Mr. McCoy? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Wynn, thank you for that, and that's very great. Kindly provide the charter um, section and article that you're referring to, that the chairperson serves at the pleasure of the, of the body or the board or the council. Because I'm not sure I'm familiar with that. In fact, I do know the charter requires us to follow Robert's rules of order. So if there's something else that I'm not aware of, I would certainly ask if you could share it. Mr. Chair, well, Mr. McCoy, is section 11. Council Davis. I beg your pardon? Section that you're requesting is section 11. Okay. And it, and it supersedes the reference to us using Robert's rules of order as the parliamentary rules? That section. No. So the code, the charter says that we're, we're bound by Robert's rules of order. The, the charter also has other rules. So you have to read them together, which is called empire materia in the law. They have to be read together to bring, to effectuate both provisions. Thank you. I appreciate that follow up, Mr. Chair. Mr. McCoy. Thank you. And I'm plainly asking, provide me specifically yes. your authoritative reference that you're referring to so that I can read it. But it's my understanding, looking at the Robert's Rules of Order, that the election of an officer cannot be reconsidered if it's accepted and the duties are carried out. So it's great that you say that. Either you or Ms. Davis can point specific to the authority that bounds us then that would be great. Absent of that, right? And, and here's ultimately what it comes down to. Thank you, Ms. Wynn, and thank you, Ms. Davis. I think you're out of, out of bounds because under the very rules that we're talking about requires that the chairperson resolve all points of order. So unless you're gonna to point to a specific section in the charter that is the legal authority and the legal law of the, of the city, then we can only rely on what the actual rules say. So I'm, McCoy, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to see section 11. 
Section, um, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Moon. In the, in the middle of section 11, which is entitled chairperson, it says the chairperson shall, shall serve at the pleasure of the council. Okay. And then also in the charter, it also provides that Robert's rules of order is the parliamentary rules that we're to follow, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. That's in section 12. I'll say, so how do we negotiate that? If you have seemingly two, two different items and you're saying one says that- Again, there's a, there's a statutory interpretation in the law that you have to read them together. You don't just count one over the other. They're both there. When the, when the charter was developed, whoever developed it knew what provisions they were placing in there and they put them in there to be read together. You can't just count one over the other. Okay. So obviously there's a conflict between Robert's rules for our parliamentary procedure and serving at the will of the city council and the charter. So uh, how do you read them together when they're both conflicting? Mr. Wynn. You have to find a way to, to make them both make sense. And, okay. and again, and also, I mean, you can look at the order in which they're in there. Chapter section 11 comes before section 12. There's so many different rules of statutory interpretation, but the fact that section 11 was, was drafted, if you will, or placed in here before section 12, Section 11 says the chairperson shall serve at the pleasure of the council. So my position would be where there is a conflict in the charter, in the charter, between the charter and Robert's rules, the charter prevails. Mr. Chair. Because the charter is considered the constitution of the city. Mr. McCoy. Mr. Chair, thank you. So Ms. Wynn. And, and not to be facetious here, but is Mr. Spiritus not currently serving at the pleasure of the council? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I appreciate that. So particularly, this section does not deal with reconsideration. So if he's serving at the pleasure of the council, we can only now refer to the next section, which says Robert's Rules of Order that deals with reconsideration. So while I certainly believe he's serving, and we both agree, at the pleasure of the city council, section 11 does not address reconsideration. Section 12 encompasses Robert's rules of order. And I think Mr. Spiritus did provide us with that section number and I, I'm not sure what edition you have there. Is that the, it's the new edition, it's the 12th edition. The 12th edition of I mean, Robert's I mean, rules I mean, of order 46-46 provides that it becomes final. So. Until we have until fulfilled, the thank you. No we longer. have fulfilled. I'm sorry. And are complying with section 11, but section 12 establishes how those votes are to be executed, and that vote is specifically called out in Robert's Rules of Order as being final once it's, the role has been carried out. So, am I not understanding something? Again, until the pl the the pleasure of the council changes, which it can change at any time. They have the, the council has the right to do that. Your, your analysis of it could very well mean, if it were correct, that the chairperson would stay the chairperson until they were no longer in office, but that's not what you all do. You have a practice of electing a new chair every year. You could elect the same person every year if you wanted to, but if you, in the middle of a year, if, if the council decided that they no longer, as the majority of the council decided that they no longer wanted someone to serve, then they have at their pleasure and discretion, the right to vote to change that person. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, um, Ms. Madam Wayne, Attorney. But, but there is another section in the charter, right? That uh, states when we change the, uh, the officers of the council. I'd have to find that, Mr. Spiritus, um, and I can give that to you. Again, you, I can give that to you all at, at a later date. Um, cannot recall where that section is right now. Chair. Is that you, Ms. Lunia? Yes. Yes. I just wanted to, I mean, none of us on this day is, is an attorney. We have an attorney that is, you know, 
trying to work this out. I think that at this point, we just need to have a legal ruling, legally, of how this could be done. The meeting was called for reconsideration, revote the city attorney and either any outside that she needs to, to um, correspond with to give us a ruling as to the charter, as to the Robert Rules of Order, which comes first, which comes next. Do you, when you read them together, what does it mean? I think that we should get a legal ruling on this and then on the next agenda, we can move forward. Yes, Mr. Lanier, that's exactly what we're doing right now with Ms. Wynn. We're bringing our points to her attention and asking her to give us a legal opinion uh, for the next meeting. Mr. Chair, the section dealing yes. with the selection of chair and, and chair pro tem is in section seven of the charter. And it states that it shall take, it, it really deals with the election of officers and that um, all elected officers shall take office at the next regular city council meeting after general election and at such time shall commence with the selection of chair and chair pro tem which is what we did like on wednesday thank you Ms. Wynn. i i don't there is nothing that i've seen and i don't believe it's in the charter that discusses the selection of chair and pro and chair pro tem on an annual basis but that has been the uh, practice of the council right but it says after the next election Yes, Mr. McCoy. So if I can help and, and members, uh, I, I certainly don't want to infringe on anyone having the ability, but you know, if I can be very direct, uh, Mr. Chair, it appears that very directly, Mr. Lawson has reservations about you being the chairperson. And if that's the case, you know, if it's the board's desire to do that, we don't have to continue to carry this, you know, into unnecessary and uncharted territories of going to do legal research. If Mr. Lawson can have or sway the majority to support that, then I, I, you know it is it. It is what it is, and that's the uh, will of the board. But do we really need to rehash this? I mean, we have several other critical items of business, but certainly I don't know that we should start off our next meeting in April concerning ourselves with who wants to be the chair. If Mr. Lawson is insistent that you are inexperienced, um, then. You know, he can certainly bring that forth. But, you know, outside of that, do we really need to have the attorney to do this? Are you suggesting we do a vote now? No, sir. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, it, but if no action is being taken tonight, he has the prerogative to, to bring it at the next meeting. So, right, correct. So that's where we are right now. So, so Mr. Lawson, if you want to bring it at the next meeting, just let the city manager and myself know Attorney and we'll Wynn. have it on we'll have it Mr. on the Chair, agenda. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Lawson. Uh Attorney Wynn, is there any possible way to bring this to a vote tonight? I don't believe that you should, no. I will I think it should be at your re your regularly scheduled meeting. And and to Mr. McCoy's point, if there is a possibility of quote unquote swaying the board or, or with this discussion or decision of lack of experience, I think the concern that I have is that uh, none of us have been selected chair within our first year, and uh, that was a misstep that I've made in regards to putting uh, Mr. Spiritus as chair. Um, Councilman McCoy has not been the chair as of yet at all, um, so there's been consideration with certain steps. Um, Ms. Shepard made comments in a, earlier in reference to the process. The process has not been followed for many years and previously I've seen that I want us to very to move forward in a transparent way. My request was to reconsider, but my request is now for a new vote. If we have to, by recommendation of our attorney, take it to the next meeting, that will be the direction. But with Mr. Spears being a neophyte commissioner on this board with all his amazing experience, I would respectfully ask that one of the other members be the chair because we have a lot of work that needs to be done. And there is no disrespect to Mr. Spiritus and his efforts, his work. That is in reference to the fact that we have a board that has been moving the city forward for the last five years. And I want us to continue that process as Mr. Spiritus, as Mr. Spiritus gets, Chairman Spiritus, gets acclimated to what we're doing and possibly come on in a leadership role at a previous year. Mr. Chair. Mr. McCoy. So let me help try to speed this along. There was three members on the prevailing side. If I can remind you, it was you, Mr. Lawson, you, Mr. Chair, and then myself. 
Um, if I can say candidly, I have no desire to be the chairperson. I, I really respect what it is that Mr. Spiritus does. And, you know, I, I know we make decisions sometimes we have a different perspective on, but, I, you know, do we really want to get caught up in the weeds? Mr. Mr. Lawson, this isn't about anybody else but your desire. So clearly you would have to be the one to reintroduce it. And certainly if you believe you have the support to do that, we had the support to have this item heard with a motion in the second. And you know, I don't know how much we want to fight on this issue, but Mr. Spirit is, you know, I don't want to tell you, you should relinquish your role, but Doug Lawson, I think you should just be direct and say, you don't want him to be the chair. Cause it's not a Project McCoy issue. Cause if that was the case, you would have graced me with the, uh, your choice on Wednesday. So if this is about you and your desires, then go ahead and do it. Or you want to see someone else or you maybe yourself, then let's do it. I mean, at this point, I've never in my life seen anything like this. And this has got to be the wildest thing. So you could disguise it as whatever you want, but this is glad handing at best. I mean, you want to seem like you're leading with some sort of, you know, groundbreaking initiative. If it's your desire, sir, while you're researching and looking up these items on your phone, I mean, just let's go ahead and cut this short and save everyone else the rest of the evening and just say whether or not you are going to ask that Mr. <laughs> the board reconsider Mr. Spiritus and then he can make a decision as to whether or not he believes he wants to do it. That's all I have. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Lawson. Thank you and thank you for your, your comments, Councilman. Um, this is a special meeting, and if my attorney says that it's not her recommendation, I'm going to allow for her to lead as opposed to my quasi-attorney to my right. I'm going to continue to listen to what she has to say, and I appreciate your comments, Councilman McCoy. But again, this is not a tactic of bullying, telling me what to do. If my board, and at the pleasure of the board, determines that they would like to have the pleasure of a different chair selected moving forward, it is the pleasure of the board. If my attorney is saying wait till the meeting, uh, in April at our first regular meeting. I have no problem with that. I'm not going to rush the process and I'm not going to try to bully anyone as you're trying to do tonight, Councilman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawson. I, I just want to mention that your quasi-attorney sitting to your right kept you from breaking the law tonight. You're talking about Councilman McCoy yourself, sir. I'm, I'm talking about my reading Robert's rules. You weren't the quasi attorney I, I was I, discussing, oh, oh, you're Mr. Talking Chair. About, oh, okay. I thought you were referring to me. Sorry. Mr. McCoy, you have a comment? Yes. It doesn't matter. Um, it shows how much you don't know, Mr. Lawson. Points of order are resolved with the chairperson. So if you choose to override the chairperson, you can do that by way of a, a overriding vote. But these parliamentary matters are addressed with the chairperson. So. You know, I, I don't know if you get some thrill out of this or having what Dr. King described in, I believe it was 1960s, the drum major instincts of wanting to be the one that's always on Front Street, um, then go for it, buddy. Any other comments from the council? No, I'll make a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. So moved. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you all for coming out tonight.